I'm excited to let you uh, hear this. I will be in Savannah, Georgia, June 2nd. I'm coming this week. Augusta, Georgia, June 3rd. Montgomery, Alabama, June 4th. And over to Columbus, Georgia, June 5th. I'm very excited to be there and see you guys. As well, Hollywood, Florida, Fort Myers, Florida, Daytona Beach, and Lakeland, Florida. That's June 23rd through June 26th. Tickets on sale now at theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. Don't go through a different vendor. Go through the Theovon site so that you can get them uh, correct. Because otherwise, these people jack them up and they jack you over. Today's guest is, um, well, we're not going to go too much into his history when he and I talk. Because most of you, you should know him. You And if you don't know him, I'll, I'll just tell you now, he's from Impractical Jokers, the television program, heading into its 10, number 9 or 10 season. And they've just, um, I mean, it's a it's an American staple. It really is. If you if you don't like it, your cousin does or your grandmother does. And um, he's part of that group, him and three of his friends. And um, he's a buddy of mine. I almost went on his cruise a few. I did go on his cruise. Shoot. I just remembered and forgot. I went on his Impractical Jokers cruise a few years ago. Uh, he has two podcasts, one called Hey Babe with Chris DeStefano and another one called Taste Buds with Joe DeRosa. Um, I couldn't be happier to sit down with anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sal Volcano. For me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you my stories shine on me and I will find a song I've been singing just for me I'm okay, I mean I'm always you know, trying to get better, man. Been leaning back into my sobriety program, so that's been helping me. Okay, and how, so, how's it going? It's good. It's starting to feel good. It's just taking a while. Where do you, where do you do that? You know, um, here in LA, or you go? Oh yeah. Are you back? Are you you here now? Are you still? I'm back and forth. Okay. So yeah, I got me a house. You split of, it? Uh yeah, I would say it's probably split. Yeah. You got to go there like 51, like 183. You got to legally be there. It's almost like uh, <laughs> having to be in that in two places. It's almost like whenever you see that baseball player and he has his foot on the bag. Yeah, and you're like waiting to steal? Yeah. And he, yeah like, he's going back and his foot you start the- to lead and then the, and then the IRS kind of checks the bag. <laughs> Dude, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> so it's definitely like a relaxing there. People are so friendly. I get to have like a whole new walk of like so, so like socializing and meeting yeah. people feel what it's like to be in a smaller environment um your move there was your first move there right like you, you weren't that you weren't familiar with it before no to that? i didn't know it's kind of i can't even believe i did it i i mean i know i wanted to save tax money and then i always wanted to live there so seems like a dope spot i love it every time i go yeah it's fun it's yeah. it's just you know it's not la or new york so it's just it's just smaller yeah yeah, yeah. are yeah. you limited though with being able to, to work out and do spots and stuff like that um oh yeah right because you got zanies that's it and there's no like produced there's no there's no like bar or produce no. shows or anything like that at all there may uh i don't think there's a big scene so it's just it. zanies yeah so when you're there for like weeks at a time are you just going to Zany's every night and just popping in? Or? No, you can't really do that. So you can kind of go, they have an open mic night or I'll do my own night. Okay. Um, But it's like kind of, yeah, it's uh, that's the tough part is keeping the comedy going. Right. Like during the pandemic, it didn't matter because a lot of places weren't open anyway. Right, 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 right. So. But this keeps you probably sharp, especially the one that you do when you just do it yourself. Yeah, that I think that helps. I, I mean, for me, really comedy, I got to be on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I gotta be. I I I'll learn about its repetition. Yep. yep like yep. some people, they're more they write the stuff, and if it's a good, but I gotta be up there feeling it. Yeah, you write stuff down or no? Ever? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. If I get my friends to laugh, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll write out like the like the big beats 
But like then if I haven't done, what I'll do is if I haven't done, like during the pandemic, I went back and transcribed everything. Yeah. Because it was just easier to get back into it after that long, you know? So I was like, I have a reference point anytime I blank because I was getting back up and missing whole chunks. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. So. Yeah. The worst uh, is like the other night I did a show and I got to the end of the show and I almost wanted to run back out there because I forgot to do one of the best bits. <laughs> like, how do we Not even a tag, this? a bit, a full bit? A full bit, man. Oh. <laughs> so I want to apologize i think that was in, uh i think that was in midland texas man i owe you guys a good joke um but yeah is it hard to separate like uh do you find a tough time like doing stuff for your show and then like getting into a different brain for comedy or not really nah i haven't compartmentalized you yeah. know but what's what's kind of gets tricky is like when i'm gonna tour with the guys and like I'm doing my tour right now through February, mm -hmm. so uh, but I can't. I usually don't tour at the same time. I I can, but like really, it's for like because I can't sell tickets in the same market oh, for yeah. both tours, right? So if one of them goes, like if we're usually they take press, the big one takes precedent, right? And then when that's kind of through, I'll start mine, or at least like six months into it, I'll start the dates that were six months before it. Oh, I so see. it's like a rolling thing. But since the pandemic, we didn't have our fifth tour written yet, and I had mine. So and I had to cancel my tour from before the pandemic. So so now I've been on tour the whole year, and we don't start with them till February. So that we're going to start writing that now. That's stressful too because we don't do write comedy the way that we would individually. So. Uh, we got to do this like whole different process, but they'll put up the sales, the tickets before we even have a joke written. Oh. So I get like massive anxiety. Pressure. This is like the fifth tour, like over 10 years that, that that's happening every two years when we're in this phase, I get, I, I get like chest pains, like it all, all the stress manifests itself. Yeah. I get like shooting pains in like my head and shit. Oh dude, I've had I, that <laughs> shit. I yeah. go get EKGs, this, that, and like really? stress. And it's always this time. Oh, because it's so nerve wracking to have people buying tickets to a show that you haven't written a joke to yet. Can yeah. you imagine that? It's like I get like nauseous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's I think it's nice because it says something about that. You want to show up with something legitimate for people. Yeah. You know, you want to actually show, you know, yeah. some people wouldn't care that it's like, yeah, sell them, whatever. I'll get out there. You know? <laughs> yeah, but I'll, you got to yeah. juggle. Yeah, I know. I know. But it, I mean, you know, it's different, too, with, with, with other people. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that it's a totally different energy out there. Um, yeah, I know whenever you said you came in, you were taking your medicine. You said you just started taking one. Yeah, I started like, I guess it's got to be at least six months now. Oh, wow. Wellbutrin. Uh, and you've been on there. How well Butrin is that gangster, baby? Is it? I you told like me that. I didn't know. It's the hit man of freaking. Really? Oh, I think it is, bro. Well, Butrin. Damn. That, I can feel that shit climbing up and down my cerebellum at night, bro. Really? Scaling the walls. Yeah. Well, Butrin, baby. Damn that shit. You you try. You've been on it. I, that shit keeps a hatchet on its hip, baby. Really? For me, it did. Well, Butrin. I I was doing. I got. I started doing kind of some weird, like a little bit of like, not weird stuff, but. I like couldn't, I wasn't doing good. I started spinning out. Yeah. But you feel good on it. Yeah. Well, I was spinning out before it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I talked to a couple of people, a couple of people I know were on it. So I, so I was trying to tackle two things with my doctor. One was the anxiety and depression. And the other one was my ADHD and OCD. Oof. So he's like, both of those ones could affect the other in some ways. And we got to treat one at a time. So, cause we got to figure out what, what you react well to and not. So he's like, which one do you want to tackle first? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I've been living with ADHD and, o and, o and OCD forever. Yeah. So like, I, I didn't even know, I didn't even know I had it until people started telling me, oh no. And then I, and then I realized like, oh, I, you don't have to live this way. Like, I didn't even know that before. I just thought it was like God, normal to not remember anything, wow. to have shit racing through my mind at all times. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff. I just, that's the way I always can't focus on anything, but I just like, it's the way I've always done it. So I just, just do it. Yeah. I just function with it. Right. You thought this is who I am. And then I had a really good friend tell me like that he had all that stuff and he gave me a book and I didn't read the book. <laughs> but he was like you, I'm telling you you don't have to live this way at all so I went and I got a I went and I, for years ago I went and when he gave me that book and I said forget it, I'll go I took a test you know and I would they put me they put like straps on my wrists ankles and head really yeah. and head yeah like a, like a, like, not, like like not straps like hold me down but like uh bands right wow. do you ever take the, you ever you have anything like that ADHD or anything I don't know I don't think I've had it I could have it though 
Yeah, you might, I don't know. So I went, right? So I go in this little room, they sit in me in front of a computer mm -hmm. and they and they say, All right, take the mouse and they're like, You're just gonna for like 20, 25 minutes, you're gonna sit in here and you're gonna watch a screen and when you see like a shape, click on the shape or whatever. Like some real rudimentary shit. Yeah. So I was like, Oh yeah, all right, well, I guess. So they put this shit on me. I went in there twenty minutes and I'm seeing a triangle, I'm clicking, a circle, I'm clicking, <laughs> and I'm like, This is the easiest thing. And I started to get worried because I'm like, I'm acing this. Right. Like they're gonna tell me I don't have this shit, right? And I'm I'm here because I'm at my wits end with it, and they're about to tell me I don't have it. Oh. So I'm just clicking, clicking. I'm like I'm dominating. God, and I thought I got a hundred, and then they came in, they took the thing, they took the print out, they came back, they assessed me, and they go, "You have severe <laughs> ADHD, severe." Wow. So I don't know what the test really was. I don't know if it was uh, like measuring my fidgeting, mm -hmm. but I don't know how that's an indicator. I, I really don't know how it works. I should have asked, but so then. They tried to give me a, uh, what's that stuff that like hyper focuses you? Uh, oh, uh, Ritalin? No, no, the other one. Oh, like, yeah, uh, Ritalin for adults. Uh, um, like it's like a it's sp like speed. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. It's like uh, uh, people it's, snort it too. Yeah, it's like it's like very, very common. I don't know why it's blanking. Yeah, you why can't, can't we think early. of it? It's like, um, I think it starts with a, um, what? A? Yeah, I think it starts with an A, dude. Do you, do you, I don't know what it is. Anybody? Adderall. Adderall. Damn. They gave me a time release Adderall, 20, 20 and, uh, milligrams, whatever it is. It's like the game. It's like a game show with drugs just now. <laughs> it's like that. Uh, what is that? Uh, okay. Uh, blue pill. You know? <laughs> By, it's like, wouldn't that be crazy? Whatever that, that's the future, dude. Why? Viagra? Oh, no, the future is just a game show with just people. <laughs> just, just, just All the answers are drug names. Just trying to win the drugs? Yeah. Overtrax. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go on, though. I interrupted you, man. Nah, man. They gave me that. And I said, you know, I don't really, I don't really like taking any kind of drugs. I mean, I don't smoke weed, but prescription. Uh, and he's like, all right, here's what you do. Take it on days you think you really need it. That's mm, it. Like, you're okay. good not to just take it on days. So I waited. And then one day I had a day. So I was like, let's try it. I, I took it. It was the worst experience. It was it was terrible, dude. On Adderall. Yeah. Uh, I stayed up for two days. I didn't go to sleep. Two days and sweating profusely for two days. And you get dehydrated too on it. That's the crazy thing. Dude, I so the whole, the first night came and I was I was like wired all day. And then my lady went to sleep and I was like, I'll be to sleep in a little while. It was like the stereotypical thing. I stayed up all night cleaning the house, was Ooh. scrubbing shit. It yeah. was really stereotypical. Like yeah. and then I and then I started like my heart was beating on my chest. I was pouring sweat. I looked like I just I was jogging. I was just in the house. Damn. And I woke her up. I'm like, this doesn't feel good, man. And she's like, this is insane, you know, whatever. But then she had to go back to bed. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so but then I was oh, like, Oh, that's love right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just take your <laughs> <laughs> no, she's like, you want to go to the hospital? I was like, no. And she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I, there's nothing I can do. I was like, I'm just going to keep cleaning. What do I want to do? A puzzle. <laughs> yeah. what do I want to open a business. Yeah. Right? And then, uh, like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to bed. Wake me up in an hour, bro. My friends, sometimes I'd be so coked out and I'd have him around. I'd be like, bro, you got to come spend some time with me. Yeah. He'd come over and he'd be like, uh, you probably going to be fine, dude. Wake me up in an hour. That's what he would tell me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was I'm it comforting just to know he was there? I don't know, dude. Because it's <laughs> just like, talking at his body. <laughs> well, then I started tripping in circles because I'd be like, I'd finally start to fall asleep. I'd be like, "Fuck, I gotta wake this dude up in an hour, bro." Now I gotta. <laughs> now you have a chore. Now I gotta stay <laughs> up. You, you got, he, gave, he came there and gave you a responsibility. Yeah, now I gotta stay up to wake this <laughs> fucking creep up. <laughs> yeah, man. But and then I thought wow. I was gonna fall asleep that night. Uh huh. Didn't. And I'm like, all right. Someday, oh. the next day, I'm going to crash. I didn't. I stayed up through two Damn, nights. Damn, you're like Sully Sullenberg it was, of the Hills. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever that guy's name is. That the guy pilot. who landed the plane? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it, dude will not crash, bro. <laughs> it, it will not crash. That's funny, dude. No, I, 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 uh, I took two days. It was a time release formula, apparently. And um, and then I never took it again. And then like like when I was getting on the Wellbutrin, I was talking to my doctor yeah. now, who who I trust way more, who is like my childhood. Uh, my, I went to high school with him, so trust him. And um, he was like, whoever gave you that gave you the wrong dose, the wrong kind, the wrong everything. He's like, that could be effective for you, but not in that way. So we started. He's like, let's start with the anxiety and depression because. You know that that was really predominant coming out of the couple of years that we had and all that stuff like that. And I already live with that. I already ha just had that. You had yeah. it from, from growing up. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. So, so I started with the Wellbutrin. I didn't feel nothing, but he said it'll take a few weeks, and and now I feel like 
kind of adjusted to it. Yeah. And I, I you know, it's hard to, it's like not a magic pill, they say, and it's, it's hard to sometimes discern because it's not like I'm bulletproof now. No. I still like, you know, sometimes can't get out of bed. Yeah. Or still like, you know, wow. I wake up and go to bed to my mind racing and worrying all day long about shit. Oh, yeah. You know, but, um, but it is definitely better. It is. It was, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like I can kind of like, it's not as frequent and not as severe. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I feel like it kind of puts like bumpers on things. It's like yeah. you're still bowling and the balls are still, every ball still going right in the thing all morning, <laughs> right, 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 right. but there's bumpers on yeah, there. Like, it's like a, the sound is softer. It's, it doesn't hit as heavy. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. They kind of take away the symbols, you know? Yep. Um, so, yeah, but I didn't know it was like, a, wow. you said it was like a- for me, it was crazy. I remember I was trying to decide on something to do and I got into some like loop and I couldn't get out. I couldn't make a decision. And when I would make a decision, my brain would serve the same issue back to me like I hadn't made a decision. And so, yeah, just that medicine I had a bad reaction to. So right now I'm just on a low dose Lexapro right now. I, t- I took that like a few years ago. And same thing, low dose every day. That was my first try of anything. Mm-hmm. And that worked. I felt that work kind of pretty fast, but then it it affected. Disappeared? Yeah. Yeah. Sexually, no good. Oh, well, see, thankfully, I've never been really great sexually. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm like yeah, like, I'll take the pills, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'll put a pill in the end of my penis. <laughs> I'll take the wiener lozenges, you know what I'm saying, dude? I'll take you know, 700 milligrams of Zoloft right to the head of my penis, right, dude. Right. You know, it's just, yeah. but dude, I got on Zoloft. Could we take medicine that way, though? Oh, like a, People um, take suppositories. Like a subpoenatory? Yeah, subpoenatory. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. <laughs> That'd be crazy. We might have just invented something. Dude, if the well, last thing we want is dude slipping off and stuffing pills up there. Well, that's because it doesn't exist yet. I don't think you know if you want it yet. Yeah, you're right. What if they, you know, they're not stupid, the people that make these things. Yeah. What if they make it amenable? What does amenable also, mean? Like, it's just, you know, it's 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 not that bad. It's, it's it, You're okay with it, you know? Like, you're... Oh, wow. It's agreeable. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, you just got to, like, just... Hey. I mean, I don't know how that's easy than putting it in your mouth, but but what if somebody's hands more fun. Are burned? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's it's true. a little more of a game show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what if somebody your hands are burned or something? You're at a bar and you have to have your buddy stuff one up. You know, that would be a problem. Hey, then. Donnie, hit me with this. Yeah, I would switch back to oral. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you ever do have to do suppositories when you were growing up? Yo, I I, I remember them. <laughs> I don't remember if they went up me. But they must, I, they must have, because yeah. they went up my sister. I oh, know that. Because wow. one time, my sister was real little. She was like three. Mm-hmm. And like my mom was trying to give her one. And I forget why. I don't know. When we were sick. I do a bit on this, actually, about how they used to take our temperature up our ass when we were little, too. Yeah, yeah. Which is fucking wild. Right now, they have a laser gun. Yeah. You know, and they used to stick that shit up our ass. Like I don't understand what they were getting at. Like it was more, definitely more Area Fifty One back then, right? Yeah. Like I was like, I don't know why my word to this woman that I don't feel well isn't good enough. Yeah. Or feel my forehead, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but then they'd be like, No, let's 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 stick this up your ass against your will. Let's go and really get to the bottom yeah, of it. Let's like, really get that temp, you know. Like he feels warm, but I want to know to the to the decimal. Yeah. So let's <laughs> shove this glass rod up his anus. Penetrate this sick bitch, or we'll, oh, ne- we'll never know if he needs a cough drop. It doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you pull up suppositories? Let's see what. Let's see some information on suppositories here. I'm interested about that. I hadn't thought of it in a while, but when you said it, an immediate memory came back to me that I hadn't had in forever. Ooh. My mom's trying to give my sister one, mm-hmm. and you know. When you're young, you know it's medicine, but my sister's crying. You know, she didn't want that. You know, it's yeah. just weird all around. It's very weird. Right? And so I remember being like getting that defensiveness for my sister. Mm. Right? And I was like, I was like, leave her alone. You know, like I was like, she's like two or three years younger than me. And I'm like, stop. She doesn't want to do it. Leave her alone. Like I'm breaking up. A, <laughs> like I'm breaking up something. Something like, you're like breaking up a sex crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember telling your mom, I was like, my mom was like, stop. She has to. She has to. I'm like, no. And then my big thing was, I kept going like coming at the doorway and shutting the light <laughs> so <laughs> then they were in like pitch black and then she like stop it and she put on the light and then i run back and shut the light like i'll save you it was like it's like <laughs> dude that's the first impractical joke you did <laughs> you're like suppository but no lights <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah. what they create and how to use medicine can get into your body a suppository is another way to deliver a drug small round or cone-shaped object you put in your body often in your bottom 
What about the history of suppositories? What is, I mean, who, give the history of them. But who, who said, let's put this up your ass instead of just like swallow this? Well, because I think they didn't know maybe they they might not have had as much science as to how quick things need to get into your body. Maybe mm -hmm. that or that they could get into because I know the one of the colons like will really absorb stuff real fast. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think they pull all the vitamins and stuff out of your body. You <laughs> right. Know? So that's what they're doing with food. Like they're really, you know. They're really, it's a royal rumble down there and they're pulling out all the vitamins. So I think they're like, oh, this will get the quickest into the bloodstream. Okay. Okay. You know, it's, um, sometimes you see, uh, someone, they trying to tell you something, you don't know what they're saying. And that is because they are speaking another language and you might not realize it because you don't know what's going on. Well, Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. It's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language, not your current one. Get different. Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. And right now, uh, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Theo. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Theo for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Langwa de Vive. You know, I just snagged me a pair of these and they are uh, good. They make my eyes feel good. Make my eyes feel safe, too. That's what I like, having safe eyes. And uh, and also, where are you going to find a, a pair of sunglasses called Mud Wrestling with Nerdy? Well, luckily, our friends over at Gooder have created the ultimate sunglasses collection from A to Z at just $25 a pair. Gooder makes clean, durable, or durable, 100% polarized sunglasses. You don't have to worry about losing. That's right. Well, most of you don't hell. 25 bucks is a decent amount. But if you lose them, it's not like losing that big daddy pair, solid gold something, $4,800 pair or something. Go pick up a pair of a ginger soul or going to Valhalla with this exclusive offer. Head to gooder.com, G O D D R dot C O M slash T H E O, and use code Theo for 15% off. That's G O O D R dot C O M dash slash T H E O, G O O D R dot com slash Theo, and use code Theo for 15% off. Protect your eyes and see the future well with Gooder. They got them, baby. And the sun, sometimes you can't even, you know, the sun will hit you. You don't know what's happening. Can't drive, can't see, can't stay on your horse either. Well, that can all change with Gooder. Get some. King Henry II was wounded in a jousting accident. His body could not retain fluid by mouth. His doctors used a rectal suppository to keep the king alive. Ass to mouth, bro. Did they? Well, he just said by mouth. Oh, yeah. He used a rectal suppository, Jeez. which is very unorthodox. Yeah, I don't know like, what religion what is that it about? is. Like we have an, I don't even know if there was a, a, a rectal suppository I and they tried to put it in my mouth. I might even say, you know what? Just go rectal. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that in my mouth either. We have to swallow so fast for it to get down to your butt anyway. <laughs> yeah. Some, let me see. Eight, 1897 glycerin suppositories and 1897 cocoa butter suppositories began to be mixed with water. Gelatin and glycerin for easier insertion. At the end of the World War II, suppositories began being made with hard uh, fats. The whole point was to make the suppository experience easier and more comfortable. Huh. Yeah, well, I got that. There was a meeting and someone was like, let's throw cocoa butter in there. Yeah. You know, like a nice, smooth, fresh smelling inside. Oh, it's like a little, it's like a, it's like going to Maui for your butthole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice, dude. Uh, it's his intern. Let me look a little bit more here. Suppositories. Um, the benefit of suppositories were known long before the 21st century, but low quality capsules and liquids have given rise to the demand for suppositories. 
Why isn't it called a depository? Yeah, depository, huh? Right? Because that's where you really, that's where you deposit. Right. Yeah. Huh. It makes sense. I don't know what a suppository is. Here's the here's what here's our fact that we need. It's just here, like I actually, suppose Sam. this may work. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a, so we've been saying it wrong the whole time. It's a suppository. Yeah. It's like here goes nothing. <laughs> yeah, let's. let's. <laughs> well, you uh, might die, but I suppose we have one last thing to try. <laughs> Dude, it's like a, that. That sounds like something that. Uh, like um that sounds like like if you only have like a cheap insurance it's like <laughs> yeah. hey, this guy yeah <laughs> it's like yeah uh oh, hey, hold on here's this last thing um you got some magic beans when a liquid or capsule supplement reaches the stomach stomach acids will largely destroy the nutrients through the digestion process after the digestion process less than 10% of the capsule or liquid supplement will be absorbed in the bloodstream. Um, so That's they, if you swallow? Yeah, if you swallow through the stomach acids. So they thought, dang, we're going to beat the stomach and go straight to the butt. Okay. Wow. So. Ooh, that's the big one. How long do you keep a suppository in? Oh, I thought you just put it in and forget about it. Like a crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I, I thought you just put it in and it dissipates or melts. Or I think you got to go back and wait, get it. Wait, 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 wait. Then uh, am I confused on what's going on here? <laughs> you better you call, have to go back. You better call it's your like sister. lost. They got to go back <laughs> and get it. You better call your sister. <laughs> she might have a couple loose in there that we, I didn't know the process. It's, I thought it was like you put it in and then it just like when you swallowed something, you forget about it. You set it and you forget it. Look, I mean, just look <laughs> if you use one more cooking term. <laughs> Oh man! Oh god! Wow, dude! No, I think you got to go back and get. It. If you pat your sister on the back, does she rattle a little? <laughs> <laughs> we might. We all might have a few in us that we don't just yeah. banging around. Yeah. Um, so, so then I really don't know how that works. Oh, you go half inch for infants and one inch for adults. Hmm. Oh, there's a tool they use to do it. See, once the suppository is completely melted, oh, you can expect a bowel movement within 15 minutes to an hour. Ooh, so how much? You, oh, so you gotta shh. But oh, so maybe you bow, you bowel it out. You know. But wh I don't understand. What are you What are you taking back? What are you getting back? What's the you exchange? get back the shell, the shell case, like the bullet? Yeah. I guess. So you're not just putting the actual pill in your ass or whatever it is. Like it's not just a pill that will then just. Like, like how we take vitamins or whatever. Right. Okay. But yeah, that looks like a, I guess that's the way that it transports it. Damn. It looks like a little bullet. Yeah. You know? So you popping shells out there. Yeah. Damn. Well, well, All right. did you ever think that you'd be on medication? Did you, were, did you, were you against it or you just had never really gotten introduced to it the right way? Same. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. You just, this i just look at prescription it's just like it's just fucked up like the world we live in is fucked up by prescription medication oh, you know crazy. the commercials are like you'll fucking die probably or yeah. maybe so it's like all right just do i really maybe i'll just be depressed a little bit and then maybe not have diarrhea and maybe you know hard, yeah you're, you're, you're die yeah are your teeth falling out yeah, yeah oh, it's right, always right. something like that can you can you if you can't stop putting on hats it's like what <laughs> yeah. there's something for everything it's crazy because yeah. a buddy of mine it uh couldn't stop putting on hats really yeah and he, he was gonna he was driving he was going nuts with it oh so he went and got that med no i mean I, you know dude a buddy of mine around. oh you are <laughs> yeah you know i have a friend who just couldn't stop Putting on hats? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, not that there that, that was a medication for it. I wouldn't be shocked, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, an, a, some type of attention disorder or something. Oh, right, 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 right. You know, I didn't know how a tampon worked for a lo lo most of my life. Really? Yeah, because I never really saw it in action. Yeah. Just like the bullet, you know? Which is great. Yeah, and what? What? That, that right? you hadn't seen in an action. Yeah, no, yeah. there's no need. It's fine. Really, no, right? there's no need. Per, you know, there's no need. But I remember one of my friends blew my mind because I just thought you put the whole thing in there, and then you know that's that. Yeah. But no, that is also just a receptacle. That bullet. Hmm. You did you know that? Uh, like, do you know how that you works? Know, I never really thought about it. Yeah, I guess there's a retrieval process, huh? Yeah, I think that you 
you put it in and then you dump that plastic thing it's in i thought that used to go in there yeah it that just comes out of the way and it's just like a little like like cotton ball at the end of a rope oh yeah wow so it's not as uh it doesn't sound as it sounds a little more simpler it is simple right yeah i thought there was technology too yeah, i thought they really had a real like a almost no. like um like those braces or somebody that has like a bad jaw you know i thought they had a little bit more uh of a template going on there yeah me too huh. i thought it was like you know those nails that you put into the wall that they they once they go in yes. they spread out yes. so they can't come back out yeah. i thought like you put it in there and the plastic like opened up and i was like and that's what kept it there. yeah it shuts it and then down. you had to pull it with the rope yeah yeah but it's yeah. not it literally is just like a cotton ball at the end of a string it should come with a little sign they put on their leg. It's like, go around, you know, <laughs> or, or like uh, uh, seats taken, you know. <laughs> there should be like a, like a, almost like a, a, what do you call those China? What do you call those things? A fortune cookie. <laughs> There's oh, just the, a little fortune on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Winning numbers. Just make it fun, you know, because they're, it's already oh. tough. You know, when, when, that, when that thing comes around, it's already tough. It's cramps. Is it, 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 I would hate it. I would hate it. Oh, if I had thank to God, have it, thank yeah. God I don't have. Imagine it. if every once a month you ate a really bad chicken sandwich, dude, yeah. and it wouldn't leave you for like a week. Yeah, I can't imagine it. And it got to say it got lodged in your bowels and started flapping its wings, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what that's I, what's up. That's what I heard. It's like oh, my God. friend's daughter used to work bless, at a uh, chicken sandwich. Uh, the my friends. Owned a chicken sandwich place, and his daughter used to work there. And she told me that one time, and it blew my mind. She told you that. She goes, "Imagine if you had a really bad chicken sandwich, yeah. and then it got once a month, and it got lodged in your bowels and started flapping its wings." I was like, "Wow!" Yeah. And she, and she, her father owned the chicken place, so <coughs> so they have, you know, that's that's good knowledge. I feel like, um, right? You know, she she might have firsthand knowledge. Of a bad chicken sandwich, right? And she's like, "This is exactly what it's like." Oh, well, so I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, that's a good way to describe it, dude. I had a buddy who bit into a, who ate one of those Subway. Uh, I had a friend who ate a Starbucks sandwich, mm -hmm. and he couldn't couldn't oh, can't open his eyes. He's in like a lawsuit. Actually, can you look that up? Man can't see after a Starbucks sandwich or something like that. He made the paper, huh? Your friend made no. that. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's got to be something on it. Oh, all right. But he he hadn't been able to see since he had this fucking sandwich. <laughs> That's the most insane thing I've ever heard in my what? life. What did he, which, which sandwich? Let me start with the staff. What do we have here? I think it was the impossible one. I mean, it's ap apropos. Yeah, that's a good point. If you put that in the title, though, does that cover you? <laughs> yeah. Does that cover you legally? We said like anything can happen with this. You know, don't you, you're not going to believe this, but I know it's going to sound impossible. But <laughs> yeah. there's a chance you might lose your vision. No, I mean that's. I mean, Starbucks. Your your buddy's going to be like. Your buddy's gonna own Starbucks. Really. He might own one or two. I don't know how much it costs to to do the uh, thing. To do the um, what's it called when you give them out but you make people pay for them. The businesses you give them out you? or you know it's like um oh franchise franchise yeah okay he, he's gonna get a franchise out of it i don't know <laughs> people sue i mean look there's been a, there's certainly been people that have had things happen and what they wanted in the lawsuit was the actual business it was actual yeah, yeah. yeah bet, like huh? that seinfeld episode with jackie childs he gets coffee spilt on him and they give him free coffee for life and he's like i'll take it <laughs> Uh, that's wild, man. But no. yeah, man, the uh, would you would you, what sense would you lose if you had to lose one? Got to be smell, right? Oh, let me think. Yeah, I already can't smell that good, so I would probably do sight. Would be so hard, man. You can't right? It would be so. You going sight or sound first if you had to choose? Sound. You you lose sound first because you could always just guess what's happening. Yeah, and you could use you could sign language. Yeah, or guess the sounds. Okay. You mean like if you saw a band, you'd know like the sound that was making. Yeah, and also if they suck, you can just play your favorite song in your head. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, people like are very capable that are deaf. You know, like they live normal lives. Right. Blind, I mean, I guess blind people do too. But yeah, I think I would lose. 
I don't know, man. That's got to be so fucking tough. You but think? smell could smell. Fuck it, right? I mean, like I would just be like, take the smell. Yeah, take it. I know someone who was born without a sense of smell. It, it fascinates me. They never smelled a thing. Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah. Isn't that wow. wild? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Guy I used to work with. You think it helps him, or do you think it makes things? Does he seem different? Do you, you have any more intel on him? He, he, <laughs> I know him, so he's. I would never. You would never know it ever until he told us. Mm. And uh, he was born that way. Like so, he's never smelled a thing. And you know, you wouldn't know it, but like, I don't know. I guess in that way, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, I would think. But food can't be as good. It's because it's th- things that right. are a sensory experience, you know, like he doesn't experience. You know, if you if you just took a shower and you were coloned up or something like that, yeah. uh, you, uh, just your natural musk, yeah. you know, your pheromones, he might not even fall in love with you and you might have the best pheromones out there. Oh, my God, because pheromones go through your nose? I think. <clears throat> Can you look that up, please, sir? How do we know about pheromones? But he's never like, you know, coffee in the morning or bacon cooking or Ooh. garlic for a spaghetti sauce or something like that now bacon cooking breakfast cooking that would fuck that would hurt yeah. a little man when you know that somebody gave a fuck enough in the in the house to heat up a damn grill when and you wake up that it. way it's like already a good day you're like that's those little things he's never experienced isn't that wild yeah best smells Best smells. I think definitely something cooking. And yeah. you're saying something like with garlic that does smell good. Bacon smells good. Breakfast smells good. Bakeries. You ever pass a bakery? Oh. I want to punch somebody in the mouth. Ooh, bakery. <laughs> Carnivals, I feel like, have a smell. Like when's the last time you went to a carnival? Oh, uh, I went to one. Oh, dude, I'll tell you this. I went to one uh, a while back and they had the roller thing or the spinning wheel went through they had a bee's nest up there dude so it's just oh. every time it goes around what you mean the uh a, like a ferris wheel the ferris wheel God. no way there oh was a bee's God. nest on top no not on top of the thing but up in one of the trees up there so oh, every shit. now and then no way zap the fuck out. oh yeah. shit yeah. <laughs> that's hysterical that's terrorizing dude it was because you know that guy ain't stopping yeah. you know it's like you just like, please stop it you remember yeah. when you were a kid and you went on you were like please stop it they didn't stop that shit <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think that dude had you no see a kid screaming. Yeah. He was like that chef from the Muppets. I don't think that guy had any. He had no senses. And remember the um the the spinning around one with the um gravitron. Remember that? Yeah, I wouldn't fuck with that one. Really? I can't. No, no, I can't. You did? Oh, where well, like your centrifugal force kept you on a thing. That's the. And then it would lift up, and some of them would tilt and shit. To me, that's there's things that are fun. Like I'll do yeah. a scrambler. Ooh, you scrambler know, the, was hard. The scrambler is what I could do, but that just spin around and just see your whole equilibrium get like I didn't see the point of that whatsoever. And that's the one where people would throw up and just it would spray everybody. Yeah. And you ran that risk if you went on that. And I saw that I saw that often. You yeah. saw that often. Oh yeah. There was one, there's the outdoor one, but there's then there's the one where you go in, it looks like a UFO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you ain't getting out of, out of there at all. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. The guy in the middle was always playing rock and roll. Oh, yeah. And yeah, this yeah. dude, Bus, was all perved out, dude. And he would get his fucking wiener out, bro. And you couldn't help but look at it. So he, like, had you trapped in, like, this, like, wiener vision kind of. Did you think, like, maybe, because you were going so fast, you just caught a glimpse. Oh, maybe, you're, like, maybe I'm just seeing something. Totally. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. guy's tricking everybody. Yeah, so He's it's got... a perfect job for him, though. Oh. Perfect job. Instead of having to be a peep in time, you're just bringing them all to you. Right. You know? And it's just a blur. And you're like, was that his? Was that his? Was that his? <laughs> <laughs> and then then you get off, you throw up, you don't even, you know, you're just too, <laughs> <laughs> too sick to worry about. It. Yeah, there was that other one. You remember the one? I think it was called like, it's it called different things, but maybe like the avalanche or something. So it's, you get in a cart, right? Okay. So me and you are sitting together, two, maybe two behind us. Okay. And then it goes in a circle, but it goes up and down in a circle. It's outside, and there's a DJ. It's at all like the like the old school oh, ones, full of avalanche. Can we see what we're seeing here, brother? And and it goes in a circle, but it goes up and down in a circle, and it starts going faster and faster. And they're playing like you know hip like jukebox hero, and yeah. they're blasting it. And it's so what happens is the person on the outside gets fucking crushed, oh. but you're laughing, and then they do it in reverse. You never did this one. Uh uh-uh. uh This is like this is a this is a very popular one. The avalanche. Yeah. This is it. Oh no, that not that one. It goes in in a circle. The zipper. Oh, that that right there. See that? See that one right there to to the bottom? Down. Yeah, that's it. 
Maybe it's. It, I always thought it was something like the snowstorm or the avalanche or whatever. Oh, that's the. Uh, and all these things are always under the shadiest LLCs because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these things are just way. See, that, see how it goes up and down, like the Himalaya. The Himalaya. Yeah. Damn. That uh -uh. thing was fun. I would do that one. That Himalaya, Daddy. Damn. I remember. Um, they had um, the zipper was the scariest one. And people would, damn, I mean, just people would be vomiting up ejaculate. I mean, people were just getting so sick on that and rattled. I, know, I don't know. Oh, that? that? Oh, yeah. See, I, don't, I wouldn't do that either. Oh, that's when those things are flipping and sliding. So it's three things, right? It's yeah. going around, but then those things are sliding themselves. Yeah. And then the individual pods are circling oh yeah so it's triple it that that, oh. that to me i don't i didn't understand that i don't even understand how anyone would want to go on that <laughs> yeah because you don't have any there's no real sense i don't feel like of joy it's just a total sense of hey fuck you yeah endure it yes you know what i mean like that's what it's like it's like hey endure it's this like, it, it looks like it would be like a, a you know a, a torture trap or something like that yeah it's very it does have a very german vibe to it um you, you hear you know you know when you go to a carnival and everything they just pull up with like the trucks and they open them up and they start building that shit yeah. like in a parking lot oh yeah like those like not like six flags like those yeah those are those are crazy shady you said like the llc's and the people running them are just drug at like guy like stoners <laughs> just straight yeah. stoners and like I, i've seen one where the truck was like losing balance you yeah. see them on you could youtube them all the time like that the avalanche it, like you see it like almost gonna and the people jump on it to weigh it down people are saving people all the time oh you see like they're on the swings and then you just see someone launch off the swings <laughs> now how does that not close the swings down for life like the guy tried to light his shoes on a plane yeah it didn't even work yeah. 20 years ago. We take off our shoes right now. Yeah. People are being launched from those swings like every few days. And they still do it. Think, still, there's no rules. Because look, I think like, I think there's part of you that wants to see. <laughs> that's part of you. I think if you get thrown on that thing, you want to almost get thrown again to see how far you can go. You want to beat your distance. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you are dead. Google what percentage of people die from a carnival accident. <laughs> you think that's a stat? Oh, yeah. You don't what think? percentage of people die out of the people on the earth? It's got to be low. Or people that get into the accidents. You know what I'm talking about, brother? How often would someone get into an accident on this thing? Yeah. Like, how, uh, how likely are you to get into an accident on the zipper? Yeah. I don't know how we can even do all the math, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It would take a long time. I would love time. to see the stat. Damn, man. But uh, carnival ride accidents occur more than we think. Oh, there we go. Mm, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I think they occur a decent amount. Uh, when I was uh, younger, we went to the, uh, the giant stadium. It used to be the Meadowlands. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, yeah. Was it cool? They had a Meadowlands fair, and it was the biggest one in our area, <gasps> bar none. It was All there New for Yorkers the month of there? July. Oh, I bet a lot of hotties, huh? Oh, oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah. The summer months. Yeah. But they they would like really like it was big too. They set hey. up the whole thing, yeah. Like but they would have cool stuff. Like I saw, saw a, a baby get hurt there, uh -uh. but not so my friend. And I a saw strong my baby though, huh? like Frankie Edgar. No, yeah, right. <laughs> like Frankie Edgar, about his size. And uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I love Frankie. Dude, Edgar. Uh, me too. I, I dude, I had a Frankie Edgar was in my dream last night. <laughs> no. I just realized, yeah, as a baby. <laughs> oh no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I mean, if he was, he was pound for pound the best baby. <laughs> out there i'll say that no as a He's all heart man i love that guy as an adult no i love him too man um that's so crazy i just remember that anyway go on go on no no my friend was throwing uh softballs like uh -huh. legit softballs like to win some some shit yeah. I, I forgot what what he would but I yeah. think oh no i know what it was it was a baseball and it was like they would put the glass bottles on the shelves oh, yeah. and you could just launch them and try all oh, plates uh-huh and, and what happened yeah. was the he he threw a baseball as hard as he could but it hit the wood underneath the thing uh -huh. and just came flying back at us at nearly the same speed and we moved and it hit the ground popped up and went right into a carriage uh -huh. right into a baby carriage oh mom right there and you just heard the baby screaming uh -huh. and we were like oh my fucking god and we just like literally like like just 
Like really? abandon him. Yeah. Wow. And that yeah, baby no. now is Adam Frazier, who plays for <laughs> the Seattle Mariners, guys. He's a second baseman and he's doing well. I hope that I don't think the baby got like mauled, but like a baseball definitely disrupted oh, its flow oh, in there. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, and then it was screaming like you know, crying. I don't know if it got like clipped or anything, but Well, I'm sure every time it sees like a solar eclipse, that would fucking say, <laughs> it can't help but go like that. <laughs> Anything round coming oh, out. Oh, dude, yeah. Even if you just whisper, take <laughs> me out. To the I'm, sure <laughs> I'm sure you can't get a suppository in it after nah. that. I bet it's a little tight, buddy. Damn. But they had weird wow. shit. Like they, they used to do also carny stuff, the metal lands. So yeah. it's like, you know, you. so what it's say is like pay a dollar okay. and go behind this thing. Oh, yeah. And see the, you Church. know. The, the yeah. wolf man or the small world's oh, yeah. smallest horse. I, I'm, I met I, I met the world's smallest horse, Tom Thumb, uh, a couple years back. Maybe able to pull that up on my Instagram. Maybe somebody can and send you the link. Might he, be it's at the bottom somewhere. Where'd you where'd you where'd you meet him? He was touring in um, I guess um, out there, out here somewhere, California Riverside. Thumb is his <clears throat> has a surname. Tom Thumb, yeah. So I guess he does, yeah. Was I don't he know. Great, was he a great horse, or how was he? I mean, bro. As far as horses go. He was. How miniature? He was. He had to be this big. Wow. It blew my mind. Is that him right there? No, that looks like a pig and fucking, with, and they kind of uh, glued some hair on his body, huh? That's a pig, isn't it? Thumbelina, horse. Wow. Also a thumb name, a miniature horse. It could have been a sister of her then or a brother yeah. of her. Well, they had the world's smallest mm -hmm. woman. Now, I don't know if she was the world's smallest. Right. Really couldn't check that out at the time. Mm -hmm. But I paid the dollar. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of wild. And I went behind the thing. And behind that, like the truck, like was with the sign on it, like meet the world's, you know. And I, I don't know how I feel about the whole thing. Yeah. I guess she's making money, right? She she might maybe can't get a traditional job. Right. So I guess maybe she found a niche. Maybe she has a family in the in the carnival world. Like now, you know, she travels with people, it's social and she's getting paid hopefully oh. well. But it did feel weird to be like pay money to see this, you know, because it, the, the 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 air around it is that it was like a freak show in a way. Okay, I see what you're saying. You know? Well it's kind of the original OnlyFans, it feels like. Yeah. In a way. You're right. That's the just the like literal like mono only like the 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 lo fi yeah. only fans. Yeah. It is. It was a dollar. Yeah, and it was a dollar. It was a fair. And it was once a year for uh, and what a better deal you got. Once a year, you paid, you saw, you kept the image with you throughout the year. You weren't really sure. I remember this lady right this second. Wow. And I saw her like 30 years, 20 years ago, 25 years. So I went behind it, and behind it, she was in like the, the cutout of the trailer. And inside of it, they made it look like a home. Mm. And she was sitting in a rocking chair knitting. Uh -uh. Yeah, she was like that big. Oh. Yeah. And what age was she? She was looked older. She looked wow. middle-aged. Like an older woman. Thank God. Why? I'm just glad she's had a life, you know? And right, that she's right, right, not right. like, they're not out here like, you know, just height trafficking her or something, you know? Right, and like, right. You know, she's got, you know, there's like seven other small. I wonder there's understudies, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, because what if she gets sick? That's a revenue stream that's not going to shut down. Oh, dude. Angela's sick. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. But it wasn't like dwarfism, unless it was. But it was like, but she was like, it wasn't like you know, we like that. It was like she was like that big. Yeah, and she was sitting in a, in a rocking chair, like a like a miniature. It. I'll be, I'll be honest. It looked very cozy and the, like oh, like they made it look really cozy. Like she actually lived. I wonder if she actually lived there. Now that I'm thinking yeah. about it. She might have. You might like. She might just be like. <laughs> she might like. They might close the the front, and then that's just her house because it looked like a house in there. Let's pull that up. World's smallest woman. Can we get some information here, brother? Um, I'm trying to think of the yeah. The horse I saw was so small, man. You could. I bet it would be kind of nice to be so small because your parts are right there. Imagine taking a nap when you're so little. It must feel so good. I get that, but in reality, how far is your hand from you? Like you, you have you have everything right there too, though. Look how far. So Imagine you think, like this, like that. Oh, hey, buddy. There's just less time. It's just to like to yeah. You. How quick you can get a snack into you? Okay, oh, so there. Yeah, I mean, there are. There's pros and cons to everything. Like Kevin Durant, it probably takes him a, a little over a second to get a snack into his mouth. You think? Yeah, he probably. He's a, he doesn't experience the joys of the world's smallest woman. No. Mm. And to be able to just to open a peanut, you put it in one hand and then punch it with the other. 
I never thought of that. Oh, so fun. Just like punching peanuts at because it, to her it's like yeah, the peanuts like a uh, almost like a circus peanut. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, here you go. Yeah. Okay. Yut Yuti Kishanji Amji. That's not who I saw, but is an Indian actress noted for being the world's shortest living woman. Now, I guess are we saying shortest or are we saying smallest? Because there's a there's kind of something different there. They, they I think from what I gather, my memory serves, they said smallest. Okay. And this woman, two foot three quarter inch. How big is that? Wow. wow. That's, now, that's awesome. like what this woman was, though. Wow. Yeah. So she might have just not entered in the contest. There's no, there's no s- <gasps> swimming ever. Um, I mean, even a shallow one is three feet. That's true, huh? There's no, I mean, there's, you have to, can you swim? Is your, I wonder if you can swim with only that much propeller. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. Yeah. But think of like a chihuahua. A chihuahua can. That's a great point. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> or something. You know? That's true. I got to say another thing though. Who makes the clothes too? Ooh, pervs. Probably. <laughs> or they get them off dolls. <laughs> I was thinking, but like. Really, you think they get them off dolls? We had a small guy at our school, and his daddy would get clothing off of some dolls for him once in a while. Yeah, you know, when you run a business, it uh, time seems more precious. Every misplaced moment feels like a missed opportunity. You know, running a business is hard. You got to come and you know stay on top of things, communicate, uh, capitulate, and um, do stuff well. Ship station helps you. ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers like you, possibly, more time to do what they really love. That's interesting. Unless what you really love is managing every single little detail of order fulfillment. I know you don't. I know you don't. Some of you would ride in the dang package if you could and go there with the package. But ShipStation, man, they'll handle it for you. They're already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. That's a lot. It works with all storefronts, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more. Moss. And lets you automate all the manual work that goes into shipping. Automated, baby. Done. Done, done. Sign up using promo code THEO for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com. Start saving time with every shipment. That's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless. And it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in T-H-E-O, ShipStation, make ship happen. You know, if you're feeling burnt out, it's because you are. I have been. Man, I've had it for a few years now. It's been grueling to get over. It's been grueling. It's been hard, hard to manage myself. Um, and it can happen in, in many ways. Uh, it can feel different for different people. You know, burnout is usually associated with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of your roles can make you feel burnt out. Being a parent, being a sibling, being a dang employee, or being a boss. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. That's right. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. I just got off the line with my therapist, so you can use it. Better help. Um, is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. I did a live chat session. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Help is on the way. You know, if you are feeling closed up or uh, alone, try something. This past weekend, listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's BetterH-E-L-P.com slash Theo. I mean, Um, some dolls, you know, they have some like, I could see it on some dolls. Well, dolls have a lot of nice stuff these days. Here we go right here. Play it up. Get that volume out. Everyone can meet the world. How long are you going to be here today for? Uh, He'll be here all day? How small is he? 
de las grandes señoras de Kansas, él es más pequeño que algunas clases Dang, de pelo. Boy. Pero es no un bebé, él es un caballito crecido. He's alive, too. Bangy and he's alive, too? Yeah. <laughs> they had he's to the let you know baby. that. Like right you're going in to see a carcass. They want to take him home. Did you go in? Oh, yeah, I went. Oh, he wouldn't let you take the camera in? No. Oh, wow. That's IP, I guess. He was so small, man. God, I still remember him. How do you? Yeah, you seem like you said. Oh, I, I don't know if I feel sad. I guess just nostalgic. It was a fun day at that fair. The smallest woman can <clears throat> ride that smallest horse. Oh, though. beautiful. And and they probably are in the same fair, so maybe there's like she's trotting around on that thing i'm sure at night they meet up dude <laughs> i remember one time i was in iraq doing a military show and one lady hit me up on social media and uh offered to meet me in a black hawk helicopter and give me a um blow job give me a little bit of oral and uh and i didn't do it man i got just too nerved out you know it's a unique scenario for sure yeah and I just didn't know what protocol was. I don't want to be some dude who looks like an insurgent or whatever. Yeah. You know, because I have long hair. Yeah. So I just didn't well, want to. This lady was on the clock? This lady was a bona fide military woman. Really? Oh, yeah. Now, did she think the blowjob offer in and of itself wasn't going to be enough? Like, why did she sweeten the deal with a Black Hawk helicopter? She just said the flight is uh, the thing flight thing isn't secure tonight or whatever so we can meet up in a black hawk and i'll give you a blow job but you weren't going to take flight no 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 maybe in, in here you were yeah maybe in my head yeah. dude but yeah no but and uh and also i remember this is and this is the part i feel worse about kind of is this she had a huge either a animal had bitten her on the neck or a huge acne a huge one acne okay and uh i was just like I felt like it would almost be a game show. What was going to bust first? <laughs> <laughs> Me or that thing, dude. <laughs> Oh, my God. She had a fucking IED under her neck. Yeah, dude. man. So it's just uh, now I can see, hella dangerous. Well, I can see now where the hesitation came in. Yeah, yeah. You know, because, but if there, if that wasn't there, would you have been Black Hawk Down on that? Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. That's Black Hawk Down. Yeah. That's her version. Yeah. <laughs> She uh yeah if the yeah, goiter if the right. goiter wasn't there you would have had that experience oh, cuz that's almost hard to turn down like it would take a goiter oh, or something like that to, yeah. to 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 thwart this experience I should not have turned it down God what an idiot cuz it's a good story that it was offered but it would be an amazing story if it you got it I know I think I was just so I didn't know if we would be what if we got caught and then I'm giving a bad look to this group. There was just some That's other true. implications. And dude, some other lady, they'll if you go over there for the military, dude, somebody will they'll do sex with you, bro, men yeah. or women. Yeah. Because they had people, I mean, out on their morning jog stopping by to see what was going on. Another lady tried to come by and have sex one time. <clears throat> I'm, they must like the single Single people in the military must bang each other like there's nobody's business. They right? must. Because yeah. they know they're only going to be there for a few years. Yeah. You know? I think it gets kind of territorial, though. I had a friend of mine, uh, Marius Sailor, that came in for Fleet Week. What? Yeah. I used to work at this neighborhood bar, uh -huh. and we were on the water in Staten Island. Uh -huh. And every year, the same wow. week, all the sailors came in. And they would invade the town, you know? Would they wear their uniforms? Uh, full on. They know wow. what they're doing. They Bring wear, it up. Sailor uniform, huh? They would wear the uniform because... First of all, we we give them a lot of free drinks because thank you for your service. Military, yeah. And then they and then the chicks, you know, they pick up chicks, and even the female officers would come in, like you know, and every times, yeah, 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 and they would all wear it. Well, that definitely is from Party City. But. We are members of the all. Yeah, that's Party this, City. Can this, we look at a real military uniform? <laughs> and and uh, yeah, Jesus this girl Christ. I knew uh, just started dating this guy. They ended up getting married. Wow, like that or like, oh, there we go. No, white. In the whites, okay. Yep. Let's see a white military. I don't know the difference. There you go, like that on the right, the top right over there. That's what they would come wow. in. Yeah, with the hat, too. <gasps> Swear. Yeah. Yeah, the hat, dude. Oh, And some they would come you. in packs. So, like, all of a sudden, like, five, <clears throat> 10, guy, 10, or 10 sailors. And they'd be having Men beers? and women. Yeah, uh, hey. yeah. Would they sing songs? No. Oh, no. Weak. Yeah. That's a week, dude. Bro, remember the cruise we went on? They ordered a lot of sauteed spinach. Really? Yeah. No, no. Oh. 
That was a Popeye reference that didn't land. Oh, remember him? Oh, Popeye? Popeye? Hell yeah. Remember, Popeye? remember live action Popeye, though? Yeah. Robin Williams played Popeye. Did he? He did the voice? He did. He didn't do the voice. It was oh, live, live action. action. I'm yeah, like about a that. real film. I'm talking about the cartoon. Can we get that cartoon of Popeye? <laughs> yeah. But, but you've never seen Robin Williams play Popeye? Uh-uh. With uh, Shelley Duvall as never. olive oil? Never. Dude, it is a classic. I never knew this existed, and I cannot oh, wait. Look to at watch his forearms. It. Oh, it's great. Oh, wow. Yo, I, this is one of the tapes I played till it broke when I was a little oh. kid. Oh, dude, I'm so excited to watch this. I didn't know this existed. Gonna, I didn't know they had this. You're gonna like this, man. He fights a giant squid. Uh, uh. Psh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was little, like Popeye was. I don't think kids know Popeye today. Really. No, I don't think they know about it. And Popeye also, who did the voice for Popeye the cartoon? There you go. There he was. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, because that was like the original GI Joe was Popeye. Yeah. Like people don't realize that that's who we I was had. Popeye you know, was like, out. I had Popeye on uh, the video game too. I don't think we was, had that, but we had classic. Popeye's chicken in Louisiana. Yeah. So every way is that this? Is that yeah? Is that him it was oh it was because you used to get the figurine if you went over there they gave you the oh, figurine really so that's his fried chicken i don't i don't get the connection yeah uh the sailor and the fried chicken i don't get it i think they just i think they had named it popeyes and then retro uh, retrofitted it to him they might have let's uh so jack mercer did the voice there for popeye the sailor can you get the youtube of jack mercer doing that voice or will that we won't be able to use it you started to say something when I said Popeye that I I, I was like, oh shit, yeah. What Our cruise, we went. I went on oh, your cruise. Oh, right on, right on, right on. Yeah, yeah. And they just had a cruise issue. What was that thing in the news too? Let's let, let, let's. I want to hear this Jack Mercer do the voice. Can we see him do the voice? I ate spinach because of him. See, I didn't like spinach. I didn't like veggies, you know. And I wouldn't eat it. And my dad would be like, Popeye So we got eats. a one, and a two, and a pair of threes. The votes are all in. Well. <laughs> Whether or not something of the voice would creep through there, and it worked out beautifully. Number one, Mr. Goldwater. I don't think this is it. <laughs> you do? <laughs> think... South Amboy, New Jersey, plan. No, he's not. They just use this as a question. You think? No, I think he was. He was on that game show. That was to tell the truth. So four of those people are like lying about who they are. One telling the truth. It was an old game show. Oh. So he was the contestant telling the truth as the voice of Popeye. Hmm. Do we have Jack Mercer does voice of Popeye? I just wanted to hear it again. I wish I could do that voice. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't you do voices if you could all day? Oh, I'll do this. See me. Tell me who this is, okay? They said it would take a man 600 years to get out of the sea of prison. But Andy Dufresne did it in less than 20. Yeah. That's uh, a little weak today, but no, that's 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 Morgan Freeman. Thanks. Yeah, that was good, actually. Thanks, man. I closed my eyes for a little bit of it. I, I see where you were going with it. If it's something you don't do all the time, I, I felt there was something in there with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I don't man. do voices, though. Um, You don't? I don't. I wish I could. We had Kyle Dunnigan was on. He does them really well. You ever do voiceovers? You ever get any animated shit? Um, I got offered two you animated shows. have such shows. a good voice. Oh, you thanks, have, man. You have a strong, distinct voice with good diction. Thank you. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's easy. All. That's thanks, very easy man. to tell. I, I, uh, I, Sal, sorry. I don't know why I called you. I, I didn't say Saul. I said Sal. Saul. Sorry. Do people say both sometimes? So it's Salvatore. It's S-A-L. It's Sal. The only person that calls me Saul 30% of the time after no one for 10 years is David Tell. Yeah, really? <laughs> and I don't correct him because it's David Tell. <laughs> so some nights I'm Sal, some nights I'm Saul. But are you ever Saul? Saul, no. Because that's almost Spanish, like with salt. They say yeah, like sa or Salima sal or Salon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have that Jack Mercer? We couldn't find it. Okay, no worries, man. Dude, we went on, Um, thank you. We went on your cruise, man. Yeah. And the cruise line just got in trouble. What was that news? You came on cruise one, right? It was cruise one. Celebrity cruises sued. Yeah, we got celebrity cruises sued. Uh, the medics gave HIV infected blood. Wow. Yeah, why do they have HIV infected blood then? You know, why do they have that on them and on, the, on the cruise? Um, a celebrity cruises passenger says her medical emergency came an absolute nightmare. 
They gave her blood transfusion from someone who had HIV. Dang. That's bad luck. Seven-day cruise that started December 4th. So, winter time. <laughs> and she says, doctor, <laughs> yeah, diagnosed gastrointestinal. But she started suffering from rectal bleeding. That's Ooh. why she went for help. Ooh. What's going on there? What's uh, going on there? Suppositories, dude. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. That's how probably... And this could have been one of them, because some of these cruises, man, it's a lot of people out there doing pills and doing sex. Yep. Uh, announcing staff solicited blood from passengers over the ship's PA system, said they needed type A negative. Uh, that's my type. It is? I swear. Yeah. That's my type. Yeah. That's my type. <laughs> yeah. You know yours? Is, is that song about blood? What is that song? <laughs> um this woman says four passengers stepped up to donate blood and she got the transfusion wow and someone stepped up to give blood with hiv <laughs> hey, bro, like yo me. what the fuck is that about like they didn't know either they didn't know hey, bro. i mean that's a tough call this whole thing there's a lot of people at fault here yeah and sometimes it's like if you at the if you're i remember when we we're out on a cruise we couldn't even get fresh milk so it's yeah. like you sometimes you're out there you got to take what you can get yeah, uh, especially if you're gonna die was our cruise your first cruise that you were ever on no i went on this thing called semester at sea it was like a floating school oh wow that went around the whole world actually you, around you, the planet you how long was that it was 100 days and you and we i went i was a student i worked in the bookshop on I, the boat yeah what how old were you i was 19 years old oh no i was 20 years old so it was like college? Yeah, it was college. It's, it, they still do it. It's called Semester at Sea, and you go and- Have you spoken about this before? I don't know if I've spoken much about it. I've never heard you- Really? That's a very that's a very interesting, crazy thing you did. It was crazy, bro. You don't, so where did you go? We started in Vancouver, Canada, and then we finished in Florida. We went all the way around the whole world. You go around everywhere. And you went to class, had homework? Yeah. And then also worked like your life was. Did you dock? Yeah, we would dock. How often did you dock? And you were able to five days or three days or five nights or three nights. We would dock. Okay. Japan, China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Kenya, Brazil. We went Cuba. Dude, we did it. Are you serious? Yeah. So let me ask you a question. What was the breakdown of like how often you had to do schoolwork? Like, did you did you were you able to maintain your focus and your studies too, or was it just like, come on now, like everybody just like phoned it in and it was just like Caligula on it? No, you couldn't phone it in. You had to like it was pretty. The 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 teachers were pretty harsh. Okay. So you really had to really do it, you know. So you really had to do. School. So you did. You went to. It was what was your schedule like? Was it every day? Every day class started. I think at eight a.m. or nine a.m. I can't remember every day it would alternate except for days when you're in port so when you were in the port you could go do stuff and travel and do whatever you wanted you just had to be back when the ship left or you could use the ship as hotel and stay at hotel okay so, so okay so you would you would also have the option to go get a hotel off the ship yeah for the days because i was about to say how could you live for 100 days in that little in a little like cruise room like that yeah it would be crazy you had a roommate in there and um wow it was wild. Yo, if you don't like your roommate, yeah, you're stuck. Well, yeah. How was your roommate? Oh, my roommate was great, dude. My roommate was a great guy, <clears throat> Ryan Thomas. You talked to him to this day? He a few years after the ship, he passed away. Man, he was doing basketball. He went to some school up in the North California mountains, like that weed school. What's that weed school up there? Chino or Cheapo? Cheeto? Uh, not Cheeto. It's like. It's like a place where the kids all do weed and everybody's growing weed and eating weed. People are made out of weed. People have little weed dolls and stuff. Voodoo dolls even are made out of weed. It sounds fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it sounds like, like he died of a heart attack because it was so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, RIP, brother. It, yeah. So anyway, he passed away. But um, the cruise was, it was an unbelievable experience, man. I mean, it was just, cra you know, you were just... You could get two wines a night. You got tickets for wines and they'd have the bar open. You get two wines a night. <clears throat> But we had a guy on there that died, bro. During the cruise. Yeah, this dude died. We were at sea for like 12 days or something. Something happened. He died, and they put him in the freezer. Yeah, man. I've heard of that. So they put him they in there do with, with, him? with the pork loin, baby. You, you know what I'm saying? To. That's crazy. With do you know how he mahi, died? Mahi, huh? You know how he died? I'm not sure. Was that like, what, mm. did that, were people just like, oh, shit, somebody died? Or were you like, oh, my God. 
Like they said, someone just died, a student died and is in the freezer? Oh, it was a, this guy was a senior citizen. <clears throat> oh, okay. Because you had a couple, so you had about nine seniors on there. Going to college on the cruise? Yeah, some of them that's would like- That's bold, uh, man. That's like, it's, it takes somebody to be like, I'm going to go back to college as an adult is yeah. one thing. That's already tough. Yeah. Then to be like, I'm going to go to sea for a hundred days. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm, <laughs> so he just died? <laughs> he couldn't hang, bro. Did they give him an honorary- uh discharge i don't know if we like put him into the sea like they did with um osama bin la i don't know what they did <clears throat> i do remember we did a funeral for him one day whoa i remember we did a funeral and people dressed up and you, we put flowers out into the um ocean wow. and stuff and the crews did a big circle like that it was like a oh my god i dude. forgot about that that's dude, crazy that's dude nuts. i wish i knew his name mark i think in a hundred days you could have multiple relationships like did you have a mini life within that hundred days yeah like you got new friends knew this knew that totally. like you know what i'm saying oh yeah there's people from like different countries on there it was crazy bro what, what made you do that like was that expensive it, i'm fascinated because i never heard of this yeah it's called semester at sea it wasn't that it was ex uh i it wasn't that expensive man i mean i worked and saved up so money. i had to spend like six thousand of my own dollars so yes that was a lot of money yeah but i worked you know to to do it and then i got financial aid from my school so that applied to it okay and then a friend um the i got a scholarship from the school okay itself right. from the semester at sea wow so i was really supported you know or it, i definitely you know i was grateful that people helped me Hell out yeah man what would what did you major in I don't remember. Oh, um, urban planning. Really? Oh, yeah. That was your major back then? You had the wherewithal back then to be like, I want to get into some urban planning? Urban planning, dude. Where are you going to put that mailbox, huh, son? R really? You yeah. you want to plan, like, help plan cities, like infrastructure? Yeah. Is that what that is? Uh, It's more, I think it's like, where do the medians go, you know? Yeah. I think. I know it. It's oh, like, sure. If you have a mail, if a mailman needs to come into town, what route does he take? To make the least amount of time so it's effective okay. power lines oh you know? to traffic patterns yeah and shit like that grid patterns yeah and stuff. yeah a lot oh, of urban planning man some are I'm, i guess i'm a i'm an urban planner you know did you why did that strike you as interesting like what wh why did you why did you latch on to that i think i always used to walk around a lot of neighborhoods and stuff so i think i was really kind of fascinated about that i liked people's yards um I liked looking at what it was like if people had a yard or didn't have a yard, like what people's lives were like. Like rich people have yards, you know, so they have like space between them and like people knowing what they're doing. Sure, sure. But poor people, it's just like fucking people just right know what you're doing. Yeah, 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 dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, of course. If your mom rears back to to hit you hard <laughs> enough, she's going to fuck it. A passing car is going to hit her arm, you know? <laughs> so it's like you can't hide it, you know? So I don't know. Stuff like that kind of fascinated me. And I always loved, loved the U.S. postal system. When I was young, it's gone downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. when I was young, what'd you major in? Finance. Oh, really? Yeah, I, just because I didn't know what to do. Like, I had no idea. I started college in 17, and they asked you to pick a major, and I was literally like, I want to make money. Finance means money. Yeah. That's literally how I chose it. I was like, finance has to do with money. I want to make money. I'll do finance. Dang. I have a degree in finance. Did you have, was money like a big influence? Were your parents like make money? Were your parents business no, owners? my parents and my family had no money. And I just was like, I want to be successful. It wasn't like I want to be like rich. I just was, I just want to make sure I make money you yeah. know like i can support myself yeah and that that was how how simple that decision was it was like a and i don't mean simple like easy to make i mean simple yeah. like simpleton yeah i was like i want to make money so <laughs> yeah. i'll check finance oh, and then i did it <laughs> and then i You're did like it. oh i guess i'll pick finance because <laughs> yeah, that has yeah. money in it yeah yeah that's yeah. hilarious and that's and, and I, I you know i don't know why i took that yeah i have no interest in it at all wow yeah you ever see yourself going speaking back speaking of interest do you ever <laughs> <laughs> of course you don't see yourself going back to the dumbest question i'm about to ask you nah, do man. i ever see you getting like <laughs> one of those like kind of like little advisors you know <laughs> that the like guy an old school accountant for the yeah, mafia yeah, yeah. Like, it's a <laughs> wonderful life or whatever like like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know man i don't know why i did that it was a That's waste. Wild. Besides the people and the besides the relationships I forged, mm -hmm. college for me was a complete waste. 
Really? Complete waste. I retained none of it. It was, too, it was expensive. Was I got it? a scholarship too, but. Did you, were you uh, a smart kid? What were you? Were you like a nerdy kid? Were you like an athletic kid? Were you just kind of like a. No, neither. I was like. Italian? A, I did. A, I, 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 <laughs> I'm half Italian. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm half Italian, half Cuban, and Puerto Rican. Oh, wow. And, and Spanish, yeah. Belize. But, uh, yeah, right. So, no, I was good. Grammar school was like straight A's. High school was pretty much like low a's but with not a lot of application so oh, that okay. was good you just you can you, you could do it and then I, I just was like fun yeah i wasn't like a super i played hockey for for in high school for a little bit but i wasn't great i played like my i was like signed up and i played you know basketball and baseball and grammar school was bad yeah it wasn't good yeah you know, I tell this story about me and my, uh, so that our school got a basketball team for the first year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was in seventh grade. And if you were in eighth grade, you automatically were on varsity and then, or something like that. And everybody else had to try out. So we tried out. I wasn't good, you know, but I tried out. I was good in like my neighborhood, you know, but right. when people came in and had like skill sets, you know what I mean? I wasn't good. Right. And so everybody made varsity and everybody else who didn't make it automatically, you want to play, you could. And that was JV. And then the coach for JV, we didn't have one. And so my friend's mom volunteered <laughs> and she volunteered and she just was like learning basketball with us. And then we used to have, it was like, it was literally like the, like, like the, the like the Molly crew of, it could have been a cartoon. It was like all those castaways on this team. And we used to have these, these, these practices and she used to have a clipboard wow. like the dry erase clipboard yeah. and just be like go this way you know like gotta yeah. our first game we played 14 games that year we went 0 and 14. Uh -huh. our first game uh i was like watch we're gonna play these kids that are definitely like these kids are all gonna be from like urban areas uh -huh. they're gonna be like t sure enough every kid on the team was six foot and uh we oh and they like played basketball like basketball was life for them oh. as opposed to us they they beat us 44 nothing the first oh. game. 44 nothing dude and then after you'd line up in the middle of the thing to hit hands and like then go get a snack upstairs we used to play at the catholic U organization with the cyo yeah so it was a cyo league so it was all the catholic schools right so we would say thank you but at the end of the first game it was traumatizing dude at the end of the first game the parents were so into it uh -huh. on, on their side yeah right and they were screaming and yelling and everything and then at the buzzer the parents started a chant 44 zip zip 44 zip 44 and they just came down off the stands that was screaming it and waving shit and while we were trying to shake hands they were getting our face like 44 zip zip uh -uh. and then we had to go up the steps together to go to like the the like common area to have like yeah. our capri suns yeah. and we were going up the stairs and it was screaming it was be bellowing in the hallways and they were screaming at us 44 zip zip and i was like damn man it was traumatizing damn now we scored points in every other game mm -hmm. but we never got shut out again but we went 0 14 the second game 56 to 3 we lost Ooh. i had the three points you did yeah Facts. and then they still did the we still were part of the awards dinner at the end oh, of the season <laughs> we were part of the awards dinner at the end of the what? season dude Why? here's here's the worst part of it i was the team's mvp no. i swear to god i accepted the award i got up and I took the trophy in front of everyone. You get to at the dinner. You had to pay to be there. I had sixteen points on the season. At total, total, yeah, sixteen points, and I was MVP. Praise God! Isn't that great? But did it give you some confidence, though? No, really, no, really, really knocked my confidence wow. down. Just game after game, just fourteen games of burying my confidence. In the last game of the season, we didn't realize we. we something happened with the universe uh -huh. and we were like landing shots uh -huh. we were sinking shots and then at the buzzer we we huddled up and our coach goes look up and we looked up and we were winning it was like 14 13 or something and we went we just looked at each other like we're winning we're fucking winning we lost yeah. but but it was like that was our like that was like our big moment like our rudy moment like at the half look up <laughs> yeah we had no idea we were winning you know like here's a question right here from a beautiful young fella right there thank you brother Hey, Sal. Hey, Theo. Big time fan of both of you. I just wanted to ask about Sal's like school life. We never really heard much about his child life. And I just want to know what was the worst thing you probably did in school? Damn, school life. Um, I wasn't bad in school. I was the class clown. Were you? But respectfully. Ooh. You know, I was like, a, I, I was a likable. I didn't like push it wasn't never disrespectful right you wouldn't, I was, so you wouldn't do anything mean the joke i was always there with the joke always there like to get the laugh no matter what i said yeah which sounds stereotypical but that's what it was like always when we had school functions on stage yeah. i would volunteer 
I, I do impressions of the teachers. Oh yeah, like you know all, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I used to love the Jeffersons. When, well, the Jeffersons is my favorite show. Oh yeah, of all time. And so it was syndicated when I was little. I used to watch it with my grandparents. I used to live with them. So I love it. It just has a place in my heart. So I would memorize the Jeffersons. Uh, like I, I would get like a, a pad uh -huh. and feverishly write down like the things they said, the things they said, yeah. and then I would then I would memorize that and I would have an impression of, I would do George Jefferson, and word got out in the school so people always used to ask me like third grade they'd be like uh, the teacher would be like all right if everyone's good at the end Sal will get up and do the George Jefferson scenes <laughs> so it was like that yeah. but I was never disrespectful one time I got in trouble in high school uh, we were sitting on the steps and this teacher she was a she was a nutcase dude yeah. she was a Spanish teacher. Her name was Miss DeGiulio. Mm -hmm. If she's out there and she's watching, and we know that she is, I'm sorry, but I, it's all going to come out now. We it, people know Miss DeGiulio, and you should. Yeah, and she was like, I think she was a uh, bipolar. Yeah, uh, I didn't know then. Well, they didn't have it then, but I understand now. Right, without a doubt, she was. Wow, because she'd be nice, and then she she would flip out on you, uh -uh. and uh, but we didn't know what it was, so we just uh. thought like. Fuck this lady. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. You know what I mean, but then, then you want to you wanted to be nice because when she actually turned, it was like you kind of got nervous because she she had this look. So one time she was coming down the steps and it was in between between classes, mm -hmm. and we would just mind her own business. I was sitting on the steps and she turned at one row of steps and she was on the land to come down the other, mm -hmm. and she just freaked and she went, "Oh, like, get up and get out of my way! I'm coming down the stairs." No. And it rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. And I was like 15. I just turned around and I said. Okay, we're not really doing anything bad here, so why don't you ask us nicely first? Yeah. And she was like, what did you say? And I said, ask us nicely. And then she gave me uh, detention, and mm -hmm. she wrote it on there in quotes, told him to move out of the way on the steps. He responded, quote, unquote, ask me nicely. Which, honestly, is that really detention <laughs> worthy? Insane, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you screamed at me to get off the steps so rudely, and all wow. I was asking for was common decency, yeah. and then she put me in the slammer. <laughs> dude, dude. You know? We had this lady, beautiful lady, and R.I.P., she did die. Her name... Uh, Everybody you've spoken about on this podcast so far has died. Really? Everybody, I think. I think it's the fourth person you spoke about that has died. Dude, I think just the area we were in, it just breeded you know people were gonna die <laughs> hate to say that <laughs> all right all right i don't know maybe i have something about death but it's like this lady's name was um what was her name by uh, she was principal um short italian nancy woods was her name and she was italian 700 percent italian you know yeah. she was swamp water italian mm -hmm, you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying she fucking yeah you know, uh, she had bay leaves in her calzone. You know, she had just a little mix of things going on. And she, um, she, uh, what were we talking about? You, you, what were you talking about story, detention. Right? detention. Yeah. Yeah. And getting in trouble. Asked me nicely. She moved, uh, she had bipolar. Yeah. Spanish wonder, teacher. I wonder what Miss Woods did. She must have <laughs> done something I was going to tell you about. She died. She did die. Uh, yeah, she died a couple years, like a year ago, I think. Damn, she was cool. Um, oh, dude, we had uh, we had this guy, Mister Coleman. He would sleep in the trunk of his car at lunch. He would go get in the fucking trunk, really trunk of his car, and fucking sleep in it. Like open, yeah, open it up, get in there. He just didn't mind much that no one saw him or anything. It just was like some weird habit he had or something, you know, maybe something of growing up he used to do or his family did, but uh. We had another teacher, Mr. Lambert. He and he passed away. He had alcoholism. But he, I remember one time I was cheating on a test in his class, and my cheat sheet fell on the floor, and he walked by, and he goes, excuse me, I believe you dropped this. He didn't even realize it was a cheat sheet. No. He it was just something I dropped. That's amazing. It was that's amazing. He like, pardon me. Yeah, pardon me. Wow. I believe you dropped this, buddy. Shit. You he used was, to cheat in school? He was the sweetest guy. We all cheated. Everyone cheated. Everybody did. Che a lot of people cheated off me, but I also cheated too. Did you? Yeah. yeah. People would just be like, when you had teachers that like that, they were like aloof or whatever. You just be like, what do you got? What do you got yeah. for this? What do you got for that? It was but sometimes fun. You, you get if you got caught though. Oh, oh man, I remember one kid got caught, got <gasps> uh, pulled out of the room, and uh, there was one point with this eighth grade teacher. Her name was Miss Dawson. Mm. She was also a gym teacher that became an oh, eighth grade yeah. teacher, and she was like a thick like short haired coke bottle glass like she was a she was like the the, the the lesbian back then oh yeah you know, like she was and you didn't want to mess with her she was intimidating like 
at all oh, times. Yeah, we had that at lady. all times, and everyone everyone was in line with her. I luckily she was gone by the time I got to eighth grade, but she was doing a proctoring an exam, and she caught someone, and she took this kid James out of my of our class, and then he answered her back with him, and she she grabbed him by the neck and pushed him against the cinder block wall like that, dude. No joke. Damn. Yeah, man. P teachers used to get pretty graphic, man. They used to get on point. They used to let them get buck a little more. That's nuts. Yeah. For our age, my dad, my dad in this, uh, like young young grammar school, whatever, had a nun like tell him to put his hands out and wailed him on the hands with the ruler right mm. so my grandmother gets a call says come down to the school your son is suspended oh and he she says what happened she gets down to the school she goes your son is suspended what happened well the teacher he was misbehaving so the teacher told him to put his hands out and wailed him with the, the nun a nun wailed him with the ruler he took his metal lunchbox and slammed her in the face with it <laughs> My father did what? that, got kicked out. And then my grandmother said she deserved every fucking bit of that. Wow. And, and she goes, I'm taking him out of the school. You're not suspended. I'm taking him out. Damn. Yeah. Can you imagine? That's Hitting wild. a nun in the face with a metal lunchbox. God, it had to But retaliation. It. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. Which, like, in this day and age, if, if that happened in school right now, the kid would not even be... You can't, in this day and age, if that kid hit her back after she hit him like that, the kid would be a hero. A kid, yeah. A yeah. hero. The kid would be a hero. It's crazy how it's all set up now. Everything is like, um, and it almost doesn't even matter what people do. It's just what is recorded and then shown. Yeah. That's the even crazier part. Yeah. Um, there was so many things different back then. Like we didn't know she had bipolar. We didn't know when kids in the class were autistic. Like we didn't oh, know yeah. anything. It was just like, oh, he's just weird. You know, like he's just, he's just a little different or whatever. Like, but we didn't have these terms, you know? No, no. Everybody was, I remember I got in learning disabled for a little while. You know, they, they put me in there for like, um, a little while when I was in third grade and back then, dude, it was, you know everybody was in that bitch you know yeah. you could run too fast you were in there like <laughs> right, you, right, right, you know what i'm right. saying people in a wheelchair <laughs> right. autism people with no arms like it was just like this crazy bunch dude yeah. you know um, so the was, i got i got asked if i a couple of years ago i had a bunch of people i got i got a bunch of messages like telling me about autism mm -hmm. some asking like asking if i have it and and once out of nowhere i didn't know like why like I, I just like I, I, I it was like I just saw a bunch of messages at once that were about autism. I didn't know why, mm. but um, I think like I figured I, it was right after I did an appearance on uh, uh Regis uh not Regis uh Kelly Ripper mm -hmm. and and at the time Chris Pratt was the we did a, we did press oh too. wow I had a, <laughs> I went <laughs> we were doing press and we went on the morning show with Kelly Ripper Chris Pratt was the guest so you know Chris Pratt yeah. You know him, know him? I feel like you might have for some reason. I met, he invited me to be in a film that he did. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, oh yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. Because I think we were going to do the the cruise again, and you had to do a movie, was that oh, it? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I wanted to get you back, because you were so sweet on the first cruise. Oh, thanks, I had man. booked it up completely, and you were like, I'll just come on, like, I'll, I'll hang and everything, and yeah, it was, you were so fun. sweet, man. And then I wanted to, and, you know, I was trying to get you, but yeah. Anyway, he's on. And he's in this movie, The Magnificent Seven, that remake of that Western movie. Mm -hmm. At the time, mm -hmm. it was just came out as a blockbuster. There was like a, an ensemble cast of A-list Morgan Freeman's in it. Oh, oh no, wow. it was Denzel. Denzel was in it, right? So the night before, I had gotten really, really, really drunk. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't normally do that, but like I just, I don't remember what the, I had a wedding, a wedding the night before. Oh, yeah. So I show up, I, I am hungover mm -hmm. with the shakes, Ooh. okay? And you have to get arrive at like 6.50 in the morning mm. and for the morning show, right? So I get there and I'm trembling, man. And I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I can't go on. I said, can I please, can you please find an office for me to lay down in? And they did, because we weren't going to be on for an hour. They took me to someone's office. I laid down on a couch in someone's office, just shaking. So I'm watching the, the, the show on the TV and there it's in the feed, right? And then De like so so at the beginning they give away a prize. Have you ever watched Regis and Kathy Lee when he were little? Uh uh, but I know about it. So every day they take a phone they just take a phone call and yeah. someone in the audience. And if the person in the audience answers correctly, like them and the phone person wins like a trip or like a, something big every morning, every day. Oh wow. So they're doing this trip, right? So th they ask the lady a question and uh it's easy, but she gets it wrong, right? Mm. And then Chris Pratt goes, I don't worry, we'll give you the trip anyway. It was a vacation. 
And then in, on air, he goes, what? What? Oh, I can't do that? Because it's like law. It's oh, gambling. Oh, right, that's game show. Right? Right. So then he goes, oh, I can't? And on air, he's like, oh, I don't know what to do. And everyone's like, oh. And then he goes, uh, I'll give you the trip. I'll just buy it. I'll give it to you. And everyone's like, ah, it went nuts, right? And uh, it was like so nice. And then Kelly's like, I won't do that to you. Like me and you, we're going to split the trip. You're still going. And the audience goes crazy, right? Then Denzel Washington comes out next, and he's in the movie Magnificent, Magnificent Seven with him. Uh -huh. And he comes out, and th the first thing he says was, uh, he goes, I just, I was watching on the feed. He goes, uh, what happened? How much was the trip? And Chris Pratt goes, like, 5,700. And he goes, three ways. I'm going to go three ways with you on the trip. So everyone goes nuts, right? So I'm laying there. You know how you always need stories on these things? Yeah. They want you to have stories. So I'm laying there, like, half sick, and I'm like, all right, I got an idea. So I'm... I I have this thing I'm going to do in my head, and then I'm like, I want to do something else. These things never go well. Morning shows, they like rush you through. Yeah. You never really get to really make jokes, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, fuck it. So I had our assistant go to the store, get a pack of Hanes t-shirts, white Hanes undershirts, and a marker. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, I in my own handwriting, I wrote Magnificent Seven on, on the Hanes t-shirt, and I put that on. Mm -hmm. Except I, for, for fun, I spelt it wrong. Mm -hmm. I wrote Magnificant Savant. Uh -huh. S-E-V-A-N and Magnificant. So Magnificant Savant. So I was like, I'll just, I'll That's go out there. Huh? And I'll go out there. And what I'll do is they'll immediately see my shirt and be like, oh, what is that? You know? And I'll be like, oh, I just thought that you and Denzel needed help promoting the movie. Obviously, they don't need help, right? I'm like, you know, so I just want to support and help you guys any way I can. I know you need the help. And then I thought they would pick on how I misspelled it and it would be a nice joke. Uh -huh. So I put on the shirt. So we're behind the thing. We're ready to go out there. I'm wearing this Hanes T-shirt that has a marker on it that says Magnificent Savant. <laughs> and they call us out, and we go out, and people are cheering. I'm waving, right? And we go to sit down, and right before we sit down, the audience stops clapping. I go, I just want to let everybody here know, just off the top, I'm not going four ways on the trip with the woman. Right? I thought it would get a laugh, uh -huh. but they took me seriously. Oh. It just bombed. In the and then Kelly goes, no, no, it's okay. We're covering it. It's okay. And I was like, well, that was a joke. Yo, then I sat down to the interview and nobody mentioned the shirt, dude. <laughs> nobody, nobody mentioned the shirt. So I, I, and then after that, I just started getting autistic messages because I just went out, like, I went on, like, yeah, I, yeah. I came out, I was like, I'm not paying, I'm not paying for the, sh for the trip. And then I sat down and my shirt was handmade and misspelled and nobody mentioned it. And then after that, everyone was like, yo, they, like, they just sending me links on autism. <laughs> People are like, hey, can you come speak at our school? <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, shit, oh man. praise, bro. That's bananas. Man. It's online, too. It's online. <laughs> like, you can pull it up. Damn, bro. That's bananas, man. I'm trying to think if I had, like, a real good thing like that where I went on to a talk show. You you do you like talk shows? Do you do, when you do them? Well, because I, I always do, feel like they they I like, do local news a lot. You know, yeah. Time no, I'm good. I I just okay. I'm good. I used to do lo uh I used to do local news a lot. So yeah, 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 right, right. For when you're going to town. Yeah, but yeah. I never did. I'm trying to think if I did. I never did like any panels. Like uh, a lot of comedians, like once a lot of guys quit going on, like the Tonight Show and stuff like that. Yeah. You didn't really do that much of that type of thing. Yeah. You know? Um. They always just want you to. I got one coming up. I'm doing, I guess Seth Meyers, and every time I go on, I just feel like it just feels so canned. You yeah, because like, they ask you to. They pre-interview, right? But yeah, it's just a different know. experience, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna Seth's say great, but is he? Yeah, he makes it easy. Yeah, that's cool. He's nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of um. There was something I was gonna tell you about. Oh, you guys have so with y'all's show uh, with Impractical Jokers. Can yeah. you even talk anything about it? You guys have um, Joe is not going to be on the show anymore. Yeah. Wow. For now, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, would did they ever did they try and think about bringing somebody else in? Well, they asked us what we wanted to do, and we just thought about a, like a hundred different permutations for it, and just landed on the fact that we didn't want to replace him. Yeah. Because that person would be already shot you know like it's hard to replace it so we just were like let's just uh right now we're bringing in a guest each episode to just oh. help out with the like the punishment uh -huh. but it's like people that we know that were really psyched and interested to get on oh interesting. you know so we've had like eric andre method man uh jillian bell uh rob riggle david cross oh, like all fun. these like really cool guests you know um and like we're booking you know just and this we just uh we finished season nine, the last nine episodes that we started before the pandemic. Uh -huh. So those start airing in a, in a, I don't know when this comes out, but 
those start airing June sixteenth. Okay. And then in two weeks, we've been writing season ten, and in two weeks we start filming season ten. Dang. And we'll do a for the first time. I we shorten the episodes, and we're gonna do we'll do eighteen because I want to kind of have six months on, six months off to do comedy and stuff. So we're doing eighteen episodes. We got eighteen guests, but then check this out. Uh, th they're just in the in the in the it's punishment. Uh -huh. uh, we do a cold open with them and a couple of interstitials, so they're like threaded through the episode. Okay. So they're like anchored as the guests. But in the middle bits, when we need four, we made it so that we can bring anybody we want at oh, all, wow. anyone. So the idea at first was like, oh, look, we could bring anyone, like from a family. comedian friend to our family to literally like the the thing was we said the halal guy outside our office. Yeah. And we started doing that. Like I brought my barber on. You know, we brought like it just so because it's like a, just a mixed bag, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so we did that, and it's been fun. You know, it's, it's just a different energy and stuff. You know. Yeah. So it's been good. So we start filming that in a couple of weeks. Wow. Yeah. Is it hard to stay motivated with it as things get keep going that much? Is it hard to like? Not that you don't care about it, but is it? it what have you learned about that? Has that been interesting? Yeah, I mean, you know. The motivation's there, you know, because it's it's our reputation, and the show's been on so long, and I, you know, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna half-ass it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we said we would do the show until we like stopped having fun, but it's just so much fun, man. Yeah. And, you know, and and you know, our crew is another 40, 50 people that you don't see. Well, we put them on a lot now. We put our crew on, but like, so it's not just us us having fun. Yeah. Like, there are, are we've been with these people, some of them for ten years. So it's like this family, you know, so we still have fun, man. And we, you know, the, the pandemic made us have to rethink how we did everything. So we did a whole season in a pandemic when we couldn't even go up to anybody. So that was fun because we had to, oh, we're always yeah. trying to push and change and evolve it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it's, it's always a little different each season. Like we don't just go back and do the same bits we did. Like when people describe the show, they go, oh, these, you know, these friends, they, they put an earpiece and they have to do and say what they're told. And if not, you get punished. That's the most simple way to explain the show. It is. Yeah. And it is like a third of the show yeah and it was a lot of the show when we first started but in the first season or two but really if you watch the show that is just one element of it there's so much we create so many scenarios and games and situations and like that aren't even beholden to doing and saying what you told right right but it's just like that's the easiest way to that's the elevator pitch you right know? like so but yeah we so we we you know we have fun like the, like figuring all those things out yeah yeah are you worried about not having joe on there you know, I was because he's just he, oh, it's, he's it's, one of a kind. He's one of a kind. All and you guys he's are. the funniest dude in the world. And 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 then like, but it's like you have a recipe that's working, and then yeah. you and if you remove a main ingredient, so I we didn't know what to expect, you know. But you know, because of the nature of the show, whereas like we 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 are out there like we're we're always switching who we're doing it with so nothing felt foreign because i've been out there with Mur, just me and him i've been out there with you just me and i've been out there right. alone just me so in that respect it didn't feel like completely foreign um and then you know and then we were so focused on getting the new formula to work and then getting this energy from these people that came on as guests that like you know that kind of like filled like a little bit of like what would be and you know it took like it's like when you get on stage you know we got there you know we started to film and we're like all right let's see how this is gonna be like i don't know if it's gonna be you know gloomy of course we miss him you know yeah but then you know you start laughing and you're like oh shit i'm laughing i'm laughing this is a i had fun today right and then you're like all right all right we're still laughing we're still having fun right. you know uh -huh. so. Yeah, that's the barometer. I think, yeah. I, and that's always been the barometer. I think with you guys' as group, it seems like. I mean, I remember the first time I ever hung out with you guys was at in Nashville at like the Wild West Comedy Fest. This is years ago. Yeah, man. And I could. Well, 2014 is when I met you. I think. Yeah, I couldn't believe how much fun it was at the, the festival. Yeah, and just being around you guys, like it was ridiculous. And then Joe is so crazy. And then afterwards, they're like, he doesn't even drink. I'm like, no. what? Yeah, he'll I be, thought he was drinking his own blood. Yeah. <laughs> like, he'll be on a bar with his shirt off. He doesn't just, drink. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do anything. It just blew my mind as yeah. to how much fun could be had by a group. Um, yeah, I think that's what it's always been for a lot of people. Um, let me text my therapist real quick. Yeah, babe. Then I'm going to be late. And then what time you got to roll out at? Uh, probably I got a 1230, but it's okay. only like 15 away. So maybe like maybe 10, seven, eight minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Zoom. Yeah, I got my life. It's been helpful to Zoom with, yeah. the, with therapy. Yeah. It's I used been... to have to go into the city to do it. You now did? I could just do it on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. I think once I got comfortable enough with the therapist, yeah. you know, I'm going twice a week right now and going to a lot of meetings. So. Good, man. Yeah. I'm, dude, this is like. 
even just being able to sit here and laugh with you, it's yeah. been like it's been so hard for over the past few years. I could imagine, bro. I don't know what happened. It just yeah. something happened, and I, it wasn't. You got a good support system around you. Now, I now it's working better. You know, yeah. I didn't. Re I think I was trying other things than like um, maybe my recovery program to make me feel better, and it wasn't help. You know, I just wasn't working out. So I'm trying to lean back into that. You look um, good, bro. Thanks, man. You do. I feel pretty healthy. You look good, man. Thank you. I'm yeah. in the worst shape of my life, but I appreciate Are it. Are you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I got to turn it around now. I got to turn it around. Why? Yeah. I Because I need to. Okay. It's too much. Really? I feel my, my first special in January, too. You are? I want to lose like 50 pounds. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I haven't started yet, but right. it's soon. It's, <laughs> it's around <laughs> yeah. the corner. But yeah. do you feel different being like, why do you want to be like fit or what do you, do you have an idea I just idea don't want to feel head? like I feel now. Oh, you feel bad. Well, I, no, but like, I don't know. I'm, you know, it's just, it's just like anything. Right. When you're like, I, I, I feel, I'm someone who's fluctuated in weight my whole life. Oh. Up and down 50 every few years. Oh, I go from like two, 250 down to two, 250, two, 250 for like the last 15 years. That's cool. So it's just like when I know when I hit 250, I got to get back down to two. Oh, okay. You know, and it's a journey there and I stay there for a while and I slowly go back up and back down. It's, it's like, like one of those carnival games kind of. Yeah. Everything with you kind of has like a little bit of a game <laughs> show element, I feel like. No, um, but you look great, dude. And well, you know, thanks, I, 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 I know you probably know this and people say this and stuff, but you know, we go back a while. You you know you know me and my personal life too, and I'm just like if you ever like I, you call me anytime, man. Yeah, thanks. I'm, yeah, man. I mean, for anything Appreciate like that, it. anything just to vent, to bounce shit off of, whatever. You know, I yeah. know that I'm not like I'm on the East Coast, but like, dude, I you know. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, I think sometimes I I got in this negative place where I felt just like really isolated, and I was isolating myself, so it was like I was creating my own a lot of my own problems, and you know, I just didn't realize it though, like um. But it's, you know, it's some of that's just life. It's like, you know, my life got super busy, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you don't know what happens when your life gets busy and when things change for yeah. you. Like, I remember one time we were at some party and you had tried to not have a manager for a while. And you're like, finally, I have to have a man. I have yeah. to have help. Yeah. Yeah. You know? We didn't have, we didn't have one for years, a couple of yeah. years. I remember and that. And they're just like, it was a tipping point. And it was like, I get, we were holding out, you know, cause you hear that. Agents will say, "Yeah, oh, you don't need a manager." Manager will say, "You don't need an agent." Or even today, people are like, "Fuck, man, you know why are you giving all that away?" A lot of our, our boys don't have managers. Right yeah, I don't now. have one now. Yeah, but and I but I remember just you saying that. Oh, we have to get. I, I got yeah. to a point. You were like, I got to a point where I needed to get some. Yeah, help. yeah, yeah. I think like you know, with the TV and stuff, you kind of need someone to fight those battles and navigate that for you. Yeah. If it was just like just solely just doing stand up the way that everyone's DIY these days and building their own audiences and stuff. I think now like the, it's shifting what you would need, but I'm with my team for so long now. They're like family, you know? So yeah. 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 Oh yeah. If you have television and stuff involved, I do think it gets different. Yeah. We had a couple questions that came in. I wanted to get to one or two of them real quick from some uh, listeners, man. Um, Dio, I love the podcast so much. What's up, Sal? I love Impractical Jokers. My name is Ezra, E-Z-R-A. And basically I'm just asking you, Sal, um, have you ever got swung on in Impractical Jokers? Sure, people ask that a lot, huh? Yeah, um, yeah, I almost did. Hey, look, after ten years, not a lot, because yeah. we're not really trying to. We're not really trying to piss people off. Yeah, we're more just trying to like bemuse, bewilder, confuse, like whatever. Just you know, it's more like that. It's more on us. But every once in a while, you're gonna come across a person yeah. that already is like that in their normal life, and is just looking for something. Yeah. So we've all, all of us, have been a couple times each in situations. Where one time, I was at the car show at the Jacob Javits Center, and I was working for Fiat. That was what I was doing, and uh, they kept this guy and his girl walked up, and they kept saying like, "Just shadow the girl. Like if she turns, like don't ever like stay behind her." So she pivoted and I went behind her. It was like the first second I did it. And he literally pushed her out of the way, grabbed me and put his fist back. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing right now? And her boyfriend? Yeah. Damn. He's a big dude. He looked like he did like UFC and shit. Yeah. He, like, he was ripped. Yeah. And, but he went from zero to, he literally pushed her out of the way, put his fist up in, in, in a half a second. All I did. And he's like, go ahead, go ahead. He goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I was in like a suit jacket and tie. I was like. Uh -huh showing the fiat yeah <laughs> and i looked at him I, and he he literally you know you know you know there's a difference between like go ahead bro he was like you saw like the yeah. like he was like that and i just i didn't want to like antagonize it uh -huh. anymore you know diffuse oh yeah so i just looked at him and he goes what are you doing what are you doing i go i'm just trying to get you guys into a fiat you know <laughs> and i just stayed the course and he's like yeah all right what do you don't don't fuck with me he's like don't he goes go ahead and i just i don't know what you mean man he goes i'm just I'm just trying to show you guys this fiat, like just soft like that, you know? 
And then like they they took him away, and then they you know, and then they he didn't want to hear nothing. But uh, Murray got slapped in the face hard with a guy's cell phone, like he went like that, Oof. like popped him in the face. But this guy was crazy though. This guy we were filming at like a odd lot, like uh -huh. an odd job store, like you know what that is? Like oh a, yeah, they got like different stuff in there. Like yeah, 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 yeah. They'll like have like half of an autumn, and you're like, what <laughs> yeah, is this yeah. even for? Yeah, like and truly, and like cereal and like all that shit, right? Oh yeah, they got like rescue milk. <laughs> yes. So this guy is is on his phone, and he's a big dude, man. He was like six five, huge dude, uh -huh. and Murray uh, is. The guy's talking, and they have bins, and I guess the guy's standing there, and the bin in front of Murray has bras, uh -huh. and like this bin might have had a notepads, you know. But so Murray, I like as he's on the phone, I would like Murray takes out the bra, and he like he's like he puts it up against the guy to like just see, and he's like, I, "You're my wife's size," you know. And he puts it up the guy, and the guy just whipped him out, and he goes, "He goes, what are you fucking doing?" And then the guy, I guess, was having a bad day, and he just looked at Murray and started to go at him, and then Murray ran, and he started chasing Murray, oh. charging at him, screaming, charging at him. And swinging at him, and Murray's running around the aisles, and the guys chasing him. Full public, <laughs> the, oh, the restaurant's open, uh, the, the store is open, and then he swung at him, and he cl he clipped oh. him right here, right, and then everyone was like, all right, all right, and then they asked him to leave, and the guy went out, and he goes, I'm gonna, he goes, I'm gonna come back here, he goes, I'm leaving, I'm gonna come back here, and I'm gonna fucking kill everybody. Oh, damn. We had to shut it down immediately because we didn't know if that was a true threat. Yeah, he was screaming, I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna kill you guys, I'm coming back, and we're like, all right, let's just let's just cut this out right now. For the bras, huh? But, yeah, Damn. but 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 that's really uncommon. Oh yeah, yeah that dude. I used to hide. This is like, it's not like your game show, but it's like I remember hiding at my buddy's house in his hamper and smelling his fucking mom's bra. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, man. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, what are you gonna do, kids? <laughs> what it smell like? Ah, oh, smelled like fucking. Did it smell like like perfume or did it smell like hamper? Yeah, it smelled like perfume. I think it just smelled like a home kind of, you know. Yeah. It was like, you know, looking for, I wasn't really looking exactly. For he, he didn't know you did that. No, he yeah, still yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. And I would never tell him. If he were on his deathbed or something like that, I would tell him. Or if his well, He might be dying. if he knows you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. Well, let's got one more question maybe that came through, man. I got to go to therapy, dude. Damn. Morning, Sal. Or oh, good afternoon, Theo. Good afternoon, Sal. Um, today's, I've got a question and it's what's the poorest thing you've done? For example, mine was, uh, I used to wash my car at the petrol station with the little, um, windscreen wiper, I'd get around my whole car in the grease, yeah, everything, pretty good idea, car actually. wash. So yeah. What's the poorest thing you ever done? Hey babe. I've done a lot of poor things. Yeah. yeah. I Have was you? Poor, yeah. I mean, well, I didn't come from any money. Yeah. But I was growing up, I got to think about it. Like, I I mean, I did poor stuff. One thing I did, I don't know if it's the poorest thing I've done, but one thing when I was older and I started working at a college, uh -huh. I was working at Prudential Securities and they had a cafeteria. Uh -huh. And what I would do is, and I, someone told me this and I did it, but I was, I used to do it all the time, but I, I was sweating every time I did it. What I would do is I would go get a large Dixie cup and cap for uh -huh. a fountain soda. Okay. But then I would go to the chicken tender station and i would stuff the dixie oh. cup with like six seven chicken tenders put it on put the straw and go and pay like a dollar 19 for the cup instead of seven dollars for the tenders wow. yeah that was like when i was like a nine to five like i was like I, I had a desk and everything yeah and i would go and steal those chicken fingers at like every other day man and i was always when i got on the line to pay like i was always so nervous that they were gonna <laughs> like because it because it really is that's really a, a really a bad look if yeah, you get caught with that, you if know. You what get mean? caught, yeah, with a cup of chicken tender. You're like, oh, I thought it was chicken yeah. soda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. but it was like, you know, I'm trying to save money, man. Yeah, that's a good. I one, was dude. making no money, you know. Like my salary at this high school at a college was twenty eight thousand a year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you're cutting corners, then, man. I remember one time we had a um, rental car, and we got an accident. It got a dent in it, right? Yeah. And we tried to get, uh, we got like some we. Uh, caught some bird, right? Pigeons and got him a shit over the dent, like over the dent. <laughs> you haven't gotten a shit so that it would uh no. hide the no. uh, thing, yeah. In Florida, damn, I guess they shit enough that like it's it might happen. Oh, you could make it look for sure. I mean, we shit up half the whole, like you yeah. know, one quarter. Panel. I watched you just held a pigeon, yeah. Oh, I can't hold fowl, really. No, oh wow, they tried to make me uh commandeer a chicken on the show and it was Ooh. shit everywhere. But that that's they're too wiry, they're too. They're too like I don't know. 
birds, you know, I don't mind them in the air, but yeah. I don't like handling them. Ooh. They put a hawk on my wrist once. Mm. I shit myself. You couldn't handle it, huh? Nah, mm. nah. Joe used to have a parrot that would attack me. Of course he did. Yeah. Wonder what that's about. The parrot? Just the whole thing that you can't, you don't like that fowl on you. Well, no, uh, the hawk was, the hawk is scary as shit. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, just a while. I, I mean, maybe you can get something you can get used to, mm -hmm. but I, that was the first time I was ever handling a, a chicken. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and you just, you don't know, like, you know, like. Yeah, well, chickens are very volatile. Yeah. You know, I think it's, um, they deserve to be an entree. That's what I think. Really? I think when I see some of the meats on entree list, and I'm like, ah, oh, this motherfucker don't deserve to make it up here in the we, top We know five. why he got here. Yeah, oh, but yeah, chicken, yeah, 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 yeah. if chicken's in there, I'm like, these bitches deserve it because they're, they're pretty gangster, man. Yeah. Um, we had a turkey farmer on and the turkey, yeah, they'll, they'll, once one of them dies, they'll freaking, you know, they'll go at that one. It's very, um, you know, it's very, uh, like, I don't know what that movie is called. Um, gangs of New York, you know, they get very, uh, territorial. Yeah. They'll gotcha. fucking second year out. It's year out. Wow. You know, they don't play. Okay. Well, dude, we didn't even get to talk really about the cruise that I came on with you. We'll have to talk about it next time. Uh, anytime, dude. I'd love yeah. to. This was so much fun. Dude, thank you I've so ever much. Done I don't think I've ever done this with you. I don't think uh -uh. so. Yeah, right on. I'm glad you... Dude, thank you so much for coming. Come on, come on. If you're ever in New York, come on. I got... I do a podcast called Hey Babe. Oh, yeah. With I know you Stefano. Do. Yeah. And uh, one called Taste Buds with Joe DeRosa, if you know Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah. Joe, too. We do a podcast called Taste Buds. We got the two. Uh, come on either of any time. Taste Buds, we're just arguing over foods. Really? Is, it's fun. It's just like... We just literally get into real big arguments. Oh wow! Over just like food, and then me and Chris is just you know just bullshitting and stuff. Yeah, yeah, man, I love him. Um, well, anytime, we'd love to have you on, dude. Yeah, especially now that I'm starting to feel a bit better, I think it'll be easier for me to go do them. You know, it's been hard for me to go be a guest just because. Also, you, right. when you got your own podcast, it's hard. You know? Oh hell yeah, yeah. But especially New York was kind of closed, so I got to get up there and see you guys. Yeah, I never do this when I'm out here. This this whole trip because uh, I came, I'm touring, so I came through on tour and. Uh, I was like, I'm just going to do all my friends' pod, you know, just do everybody's podcast, which I never get to do it. So it was, it's been a fun week, man. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for making us one of them, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, and the new season, when does it come up? June 16th, it starts on Thursday nights. And uh, I'm touring. I have like 20, 30 cities up right now, and I'm adding all the time on my website, savilcanocomedy.com. Vegas is one that I just announced that I'm excited about to get going. But yeah, there's tons of cities up there, man. We're doing Phoenix and Boulder and Vancouver, wow. Seattle, Portland, Evansville, Louisville. Dang. Um, everywhere. Nashville. Everywhere. You guys just Rochester, came Nashville. Syracuse. Just did Nashville. Uh, Minneapolis, Milwaukee. I mean, I'm, it's, it's loaded up. I've been loading up. Cool. Well, you guys can check it out and go check out Sal in person, man. Um, any way you get Sal Volcano is a great way to get him. And uh, and I'm grateful to have got to spend time with you, man. Oh, Thanks right so on, much, dude. Yeah, love you, buddy. Yeah. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake and let myself on my shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my stories. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. And now. I on the runaway train with a heavy load of my past And these wheels that I've been riding on They're worn so thin that they're damn near gone I guess